Hey guys, welcome to episode 182 of Four Player Anime Cast. I am your host, Spire. It is the end of October, actually, one more day, uh, October 30th, one more day until Halloween. And let's just, I guess, get right on to it. Here are my compatriots, Nier. Hi. Toast. Nier, why don't you do that one show? <laughs> I believe and- in you. This is harassment at this point. <laughs> and dark. Hi. All right. So, how have you guys been doing recently? What about you, Nier? How have your past two weeks been? Um, they kind of they kind of piss me off, actually. <laughs> uh, so, so, so me and my good pal, good friend, uh, Sin. Uh, mm-hmm. we were playing through Far Cry 6, right? Yes. And, uh, we bought the, so Ubisoft has, like, this subscription service thing, right? You know, like, mm-hmm. fucking everybody's doing now, where, like, you pay, pay, you know, uh, like, 20 bucks, whatever. For, for me, it was $25, because fucking Canadian dollars sucks, and they tax you. <laughs> um... It was twenty five dollars, and uh, you know, you get access to like all the Ubisoft games, or whatever. So we got it mm-hmm. for Far Cry, and you know, instead of buying the fucking game, which is eighty dollars yeah. here, um, and you know, we've been playing through it. We've been having some fun. You know, it's a glitchy mess, but uh, you know, it's fun. It's Far Cry, but then like suddenly, uh, like for no reason at all. Uh, I like we booted up, we we join each other's games or whatever, and then all my items are gone. Uh, I have no items. I can't heal. <laughs> what the I fuck? can't use my parachute. I can't use my wingsuit. Uh, I can't use my grappling hook. Like, fucking everything is gone. So effectively, my game just decided to randomly soft lock. Um. <clears throat> And so I can't play the game anymore. <laughs> like, I just, I just can't beat the game. It's just like all fucked up. <laughs> um, yeah, like, it, like the, the, my save is fucked. So I contacted um, customer support, and they were like, "Oh uh, yeah, you, you could like, you could like send us your save, and we could see if we could fix it." Um, and I was like, kind of just want a refund instead. <laughs> I kind of just don't want to fucking deal with this. Um. So yeah, that's been a that's been fun to deal with. Um, oh, it's great. Yeah. On top of that, uh, you know, fucking Fate Grand Order, uh, the Saber Wars two event went up, uh, which means the Space Ishtar banner went up, and I spent all of my gourds, uh, which is about three hundred and fifty I had saved up. Um, and they didn't get her. Uh, try harder. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, and then <laughs> I spent I spent thirty dollars, and then I didn't get her, and oh. so I was like, "Fuck this." Um, were they like a guaranteed here? SSR up or something, or, did, or were you just desperate? No. <laughs> I I just spent thirty dollars and I didn't get it. Like, yeah, do you think fucking FGO has a guaranteed anything? Like, <laughs> uh, for it's New weird. Year's they did fucking I joke. <laughs> it's one percent, right? It's like yeah, it's one percent, and there's no pity, and there's no fucking sparking, and people still defend that shit. Fucking pisses me. Bro, yeah, that's, near. Just near, she's it. worth it. She's worth it, near. <laughs> I mean, she is. She's like the she's best fucking the character car. in the game. Um, but I don't have that money to spend for fucking non-guaranteed. Fuck that. All right. Anything else other than getting screwed nope. in FTO? <laughs> no, nope. I've just been getting fucked all all week. <laughs> all right, Dark. What about you? Um, in a somewhat similar fashion. I mean, I did, I did what forty rolls or, f- yeah, I think forty rolls and didn't get jack shit. So there was that too. <laughs> Um, so that was cool, but I don't really play that game anyway, because I'm juggling, like, fucking eight different mobile games, so 
you know, because uh, I got back into Grand Blue with the most recent event for not for Gintama. As a matter of fact, I ignored the Gintama event. I don't even have the event character because I didn't even skip through it because I couldn't be bothered. Um, so there's that. Uh, but now the most recent event was with uh, Lunalu, and that was very fun. And they teased her new unit, so I'm looking forward to that. Which I could get on release with the amount of crystals I have for Spark, but I don't think I will. I'll probably wait. Yeah. Um, unless she's limited, then I might. Um, and then other than that, yeah, I started playing fucking World Flipper, because I forgot that was out in, e in NA. <laughs> uh, okay. And I forgot how much fun that game was. But yeah, it's just a very fun... Very fun pinball game, and they're giving out a shitload of rolls, so okay. that's very cool. I got I got the two new the two new five stars. Sure, pretty neat. Stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, still uh. still keeping up with Punishing Gray Raven and Mega Man Cross Dive as well. So God damn it. And Genshin <laughs> Impact. So how many are you are you literally like turning it you know how some people punish or sorry, uh, some people put in the uh, Discord, like in some channels for mobile, when you have mobile game stuff or even just friendly personal Discords, you have people that post screenshots of them playing those emulators like Nox Player and so on, but they have five different mobile games open up at the same time and they're rotating through all of them are you becoming one of those people <laughs> is is this the timeline <laughs> yeah except i'm doing them all at once on my phone one at a time <laughs> um oh uh, god just but yeah you can't, you can't do that to yourself mate. No, i'm just saying I mean, like I, i've, I've having, tried to I'm live through so half much of fun in all of them <laughs> huh? um, i'm getting this value it's this free to play stockholm syndrome have you ever heard of it <laughs> Dude, yeah, so, the, 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 the worst part is like when you're when you're playing all of them you feel like you're constantly getting some sort of value so it's this desperate idea of oh but i'm getting something by playing because it's free to play in in a sense eternal busy work as Sassian says in uh in chat but then yeah, i mean when... pretty much it's like i i finish all of these dailies and i'm like what did i even do this for <laughs> like what the fuck yeah. am i doing but, and I but do when you finish anyway. them, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, because it feels like you have to get the value. You, you might as well. well get yeah, the value, I right? mean, I need exactly. to do it, or when fucking yeah, yeah. Garo and Ito and Ito come out in Genshin, I'm not going to have enough rolls. Yeah. So you always feel like, oh, I'm getting value because you know why not do it? Because it's free. But when you're all through with it, you're you quit cold turkey and you're done with a mobile game. You always feel like you're on top of the world. You, yeah, you you've come out. You're you're out of jail. You're just walking. The music is playing, and you're just like, why did I even play that game in the first place? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of right what I'm trying, I'm trying to think of what game that I like dropped off on, and I was like, damn, this feels good to not do this every day. <laughs> Probably fucking Genshin, to be honest. And now I'm back into it anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of like slacking in most of them anyway, though. Um, thankfully, like, you know, Mega Man Cross Dive does that thing where it's like, like, I'm not completing most of the dailies because I'm like, fuck it. But they do have the thing where it's like, you can skip like most shit and just get stuff per day instead of actually playing. <laughs> like, you're like, ah, I don't really feel like playing today. I'm just going to open it up, fucking skip everything uh, <laughs> and then get like some stuff and then move on. Mm hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, Genshin's still fun, uh, and I'm gonna want Ido and Garo because they're hot, so I'm gonna need to get them. You sound I'm insane right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning uh, on everything yeah. five years in advance. I just need all of them. Yeah, and Grand Blue, Grand Blue finally got me back in because oh my god, please stop well, doing no, this. Like stuff. for a while, for a while there. I mean, I like Grand Blue. Right. I mean, I it's do. not. I think a lot I don't of think that's the problem. That's not the problem. <laughs> a lot I don't of think recent stuff like, has been pretty questionable. 
But it's more like you know, like the I I stopped playing for a couple months because I mean, like that the stuff's events still there. That yeah, but shit is still in I the can, game, like, and there's still I'm kind of a it. god, so I can uh, make <laughs> use of those things. So you know, um, oh. <laughs> but yeah, so no, uh, that's been all right. Yeah, um, keep grinding, white boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean the grind, like the grind never stops in any game that I am playing. So there's that. Um, Eternal suffering, yeah. Anything, <laughs> it's the best really stone, essentially. Nothing else, nothing else really going on other than like keeping up with some anime, been watching okay. some new stuff. Um, yeah, it's a, a, that's kind of about it. Uh, so, well, so actually, dark. yeah, before I, I re, I re injured my back getting out of bed or something, Damn. which was it really cool. It. Um, it's been getting journal? a little bit yeah. better. I think, I, yeah, I think I, I think it's improving. Like right now, it feels pretty good compared to even earlier this morning and the previous days. So you know, I'll keep popping fucking, what is it a leave or an aproxin or whatever, and hope for the best for the next like week or a couple days, and then maybe get back into the gym. <laughs> and I, uh, not go too long, but on a different note, I fucking got what is it? I actually owe money for that. Two bottles of Turkesteron. So that's cool. Cool that if you don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not anabolic. It's not illegal. Um, and that is not a placebo. I can attest to that. After using it for a week, uh, kind of insane how much more stamina you have after taking it. Kind of just blow through your fucking like current average like lift. Uh, and it's uh, like your fucking reps to failure. And you're like, okay, well, I I just doubled what I was hitting, so that's cool, like rep wise. <laughs> um, and that's pretty neat. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was, it's 130 bucks for uh two months worth. It's like 60 but like 65 dollars for about a month's worth. So if you're taking a thousand. Taking two thousand, that's one hundred and thirty dollars for one month. So, have fun with that if uh, <laughs> if you decide to become a gym rat and start taking that. Yeah, it's uh, some of these uh, products are pretty interesting. Anything else? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Anime side, like I said, just started some new stuff. Uh, been going through some old stuff, like and well, not even old stuff. Just been keeping up with certain stuff, like um. There's a Jahi that actually is a 20-episode series that I did not know. Oh, my God. Um, you know. Okay. Toast, what about you? Speaking of gotcha luck... What's it called again? Oh, right. Uh, That's our lane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I have to look it up on my phone. Uh, Azure Lane got a rerun of the Friendships. And there's, I already got them last time, so who cares about them? But then okay, two, two more ones. Near, I can't pronounce these names. Okay. They're French. Le, 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 le terrible, right? Is that how you say le terrible in French? Uh, yeah. And le terrible. Maïl Brézé, Brézé. Near, how do you pronounce this? Uh, Near. I don't know. Type it out. My, my <laughs> I need to pronounce this and it doesn't show him what the word is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would assume my brezé, something like that. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm I not know. French. I, I haven't Jesus. spoken French in a long time. Aren't you speaking Thank French now? <laughs> Honey, aren't you speaking French now? Uh, no. My 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 <laughs> is the one with the shield, so she's pretty cool. I got them in thirty rolls. With a uh, two point five and two percent drop rate, so that was good for me. Cost me no money, cause all the money you spend in Azure Lane is on is on skins. So that that's my gotcha luck. I feel bad for you guys. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Oh, Anything I else? I don't know. 
Oh yeah, speak speak speaking of saber faces near uh space star is a rin face, but yeah. Speaking of what 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 darko, yeah. Sh- sh- sure, yeah. I Oro Crony got 500k subs, good for her. Uh-huh. Oh, that's it. Oh, I... uh... no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's it called? Yeah. Uh, shit, there it is. Okay. Uh, I've been. You're not the only one who's been playing Air Arrow Gaze. Spire, I know you're gonna bring it up. Uh, was I? I, know I guess. <laughs> yeah, you are now, buddy. You're not <laughs> escaping this one. How How do you feel about a? T- Tailbound Spire. What was that one? It's the I one know. where uh, it's the it's the one where it's a uh, it has twenty nine sex scenes, but they're all furry. I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of the, yeah. The you know that one. Are you talking about like actual furry or like, yeah, like are you talking about that um, like anthropomorphic like furry thing? Uh no, What's... I do not play those sorts of visual levels. I apologize. Yeah, What's yeah. that? Uh, I, can, I can hear. I can hear your voice wavering, dude. You're alive. Yeah, really you're, we can hear the beads of sweat <laughs> as I secretly hide my entire yeah, furry you fucking get, Just smash yeah. X on browser tabs. As you, as you, yeah, as you close your fucking <laughs> two hundred furry commissions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which which spire was it? You that played changed or with someone else? What the fuck has changed? Changed? It's that one super furry RPG Maker game that recently got a uh, remaster. Well, that answers your question because I don't play RPG Maker games. That was you, that was, that was you Dude, right? You are a <laughs> that now, was brother. you. <laughs> here, Spire. Uh, let me. Here, you don't remember this? Uh, it's pretty famous in the this in is circles. On Steam? It's pretty famous yeah. in circles. Which circles are of those? It's I on don't Steam. want to. Got a remaster, so yeah, it's eligible. Why not? Ay, ay, ay. What uh, the what, fuck? What? No, what the fuck is this? Why did why, why haven't we why is the animation yet, like this? Why haven't we streamed this? <laughs> I don't even I'm not even clicking I'm literally just looking at the thumbnail. I'm just like what, can the, you, what is you this? can't stream that. No, that's yeah, you can. Well, it's... actually we could on whatever other site we use. Yeah. Yeah. I mean so, if so if I was that's say, not, it's defunct now though. Yeah. If you're gonna stream it, stream the original version because the, the remaster ad, has some added scenes that uh they're quest they're they're not they're not explicit in there's no, there's no sex involved, but it's a uh, implied, I guess. You, you like, you like double penetration, but not really double penetration. That's your thing, right? What does that what? mean? <laughs> what does that mean? What do you? What is it like? Psychological double penetration? No, like, it's like it, it's it, they're 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 goo furry, so it's okay. There's they they don't got real wieners, is what I'm saying. Oh, oh yeah. So that may, that makes it not gay. Yeah, I the, to answer your question, Toast. No, I have not read creature. this series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. to, to answer blind, your question, dude. Toast. I have not. I've not played it. But Aspire, fucking fiendishly adds to wish list for later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is this on Steam? What is this, it? You said this was on fucking... Steam Greenlight or whatever. Or is this already out? I think yeah, it's, it's out. out. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm definitely putting it on my wish list for Black Friday. Yeah, but it's part yeah, of the, the Steam Hollow. The first truthful thing you said all oh, time. It's on sale, forty percent off. Wait, this. I don't think money? the sale is the point. Of course, it costs money, dude. Well, I thought it was you free to play. You think Are furries you know? would? You think furries would? Oh, look at that price. Shit, that's true. Look that's at true. look at look at oh, Dark okay. trying to $3 not pay dollars and fifty nine cents. That makes look sense. at look at look at Dark trying to Dude, not pay for quality of literature. Six thousand two hundred and ten. Fuck. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> I'm in the wrong <laughs> fucking business, dude. Dark, this has dark. this has six thousand two hundred and ten reviews. Like, like is, that that's not even your, sales. Instead of making your dumbass Genshin cards, you should be making fucking furry cards, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, imagine if it was plural <laughs> and not just and not yeah. just venti. Wouldn't that be crazy? 
Yeah, apparently the story's pretty good, even though the art is questionable. So uh, <laughs> the story's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching the trailer right so now. It's like, <laughs> it looks really good. You know, I watched. I'm watching Manly Badass Heroes playthrough, and it's okay, I guess. It's kind of weird, but uh, if you're into that, more power to you. I'm not one to judge. Well, I. So, but uh... yes, but I recommend it to you. Why me? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> yeah, this game this game is actually a big like analogy for someone like trying to get into furry art for the money and then trying not to lose themselves in the process. What else? So, uh, yeah. What? No, continue. But yeah. No, no. Or, or do you or do you want tailbound spire? I don't want any of <laughs> The thing is, also, uh, just just a quick tangent on this, but I think there's a sort of how do yeah, I say? Here this? comes Spire's forty minute furry rant. <laughs> yeah, not to go there's on a tangent a... about this, but like I'm totally not a furry, and like you can't <laughs> prove that I am really. <laughs> there's there's a confluence, I think, of niche needs that have come collided together to create this weird market. Where people are literally just buying any sort of Steam visual novel, even if it's like the crappiest shit ever. Because if you think about it, there's obviously all these degenerate, fetish, niche people who are who like, I guess, fan fiction, but they want more than fan fiction, right? They want like the animated fan yeah, they fiction. Want it, they want to be immersed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they want that. So there's that niche. They're the weebs who are like, hey, you know, Japan kind of stuff. They're the people who are just like lazy people, right? Who don't actually want to play games. They just want to do, just read the shit. So they've all gathered together. And usually these are all the types of people who are willing to spend a lot of money on really stupid shit, right? So they've all gathered together on Steam. And now Steam is selling them all these weird Python visual novel RPG maker things about lesbian furry fetish whatever things that are all you know in a college high school and they're all you know hanging out and for some reason they have fifty different sex scenes for whatever reason right so people are just buying all these up because all these sort of niche crowds have combined together to push money. For this one shit, even though right now the sort of range of visual novels in the Steam market is completely garbage. <laughs> so it's just like Yeah, well I blame seeing... <laughs> I blame VTubers streaming Undertale. Okay. <laughs> that is true. That's that's all the that's definitely a source of problem. Anyways, uh, but yeah, I guess... uh back back on topic, Spire. Did you did you have anything else? You, you you should you should Google you should Google Tailbound and look at the images. Yeah, I am not googling anything related to that. I'm not putting anything of that yeah, in my search history. Fucking yeah, you hear his keyboard going right now. If you listen carefully, <laughs> yeah, you, you you want one of the sentences I found? It's pretty good. I'll give you one sentence. I like I like how you say sentence as if that's enough of a bomb to lob into chat. <laughs> All right, uh, so it's, uh, come on, you can shove your snout up my butt. No one will see f- us. What does that, what the fuck does that Yeah, mean? it's fine as long as no one sees, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Out of sight, out of mind. Oh, if no one mean, sees, has, did it really? If, you, if you're into that, it looks interesting. It's on itch.io. I'll, th- I'll throw it out there, why not? So that one <laughs> is, is that free? Uh, Isn't it's, everything on itch.io free? No. Buy no. now ten dollars or more. Well, more power to you. Oh, hey, they don't have. Oh, wait, yeah, they do. They have it there. Never mind. I was gonna link the page, but then there's, bam. Is there a demo yeah. or what? Of course there is. Yeah, there's a demo. All right. Anyways. Uh, uh but, but yeah, back on the real topic. I, I, I. Spy, how do you feel about love sweets? The fuck is love sweet? Isn't that another what? like? Oh, the, uh, this one. Yeah. Just went on Steam. Okay. Yeah. This one. You mean the, on a the, manga gamer? 
Um, this one, yeah. Okay, what I forget. Oh, yeah, this one was one of the older ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't gone through it, but it's by Moonstone mainly, right? Um, so I would say Moonstone isn't terrible at make like their cast of staff usually isn't really bad at making stuff. Um, in terms of general stories, the art seems okay. It's pretty standard 2014 kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know. It seems okay to me for the most part. It could pretty be pretty vanilla and boring, but you know, eh, yeah, that's the risk you take for reading <laughs> 2014 more like you know more like a visual novel kind of stuff, right? It seems okay. I yeah, I, I, I skipped over that, and I got Adventure Liz and the Erotic Dungeon instead. So, uh, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> like, I knew he's already sighing. Like, as he's <laughs> as he's going through the sentence, he's already sighing. It promises, it promises eight hours plus eight hours playing time plus additional challenges. So I'm in. Wow. <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> All right. Anyways, my end. I've re. I haven't gone through too much. Um. There's been what, a your v- visual... what about your VNs? Yeah, tell us. Well, can you can you beat my list? <laughs> it's gonna be pretty hard, but uh, I haven't been going through too much in terms of VNs. I know there's a bunch of ones that popped up on the feed, right? There's Koi Kari, who which is the most recent VN by Asa Project, which is a studio that I really like. Unfortunately, you know, translations for these are pretty shitty. Love Suites, and then Dona Dona, uh, who, which did, I, which was really popular last year, I believe. It, like, it was tops on like, most of the rankings charts for VNs and stuff. So I'm thinking of looking through that, probably just for all, obviously, because I don't like tra- the translations on these things. But So going through that, I still have Amakano and Nukitashi. I, I started a little, little bit of a I've started a little bit of Nukitashi, but not too much. But other than that, it's mostly it's <laughs> check out the <laughs> repose of chances. Check out the Steam. He took checked out the Steam uh, feature games of visual novels. First, this first shown is Time and in Battle Area, which isn't even a visual novel. Beast. I mean, the thing is, Steam visual novels in general, you know, it went bad when Overdrive, the studio that is now, I believe. Overdrive is defunct, right? Now, I believe. But Overdrive, their most famous, their most well selling visual novel is Go Go Nippon. Think about this the studio that made Kira Kira and Deer Drops, some of you know, the more popular visual novels, one of the more popular visual novels of that year, was just like, yeah, our most popular game is fucking meme game. That we just shit it out for essentially just for just to make money and is just the the first random game that we shit out on. And that's our most popular game. It worked. (laughs) Yeah. It's, you know. Uh, It's it's not a meme game anymore, Spy. They're VTubers now. Oh, yeah. The the Google Nippon team is actually, they're actually VTubers now. Yeah, you are are correct. Yes, yes. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I haven't been going through too much. Uh, mostly life recently. I've been a little bit busy with how about projects. how do you how about uh how do you feel about Move Love Spire? What about Move Love? How do you feel about Move Love? What can you tell us about that series? I mean, it's pretty standard. I don't know. Like the issue is, it's like I I read uh-oh, the series, uh-oh. but it's not. Spire's about to say something controversial. <laughs> it's never been up my alley, let's say. Because you, you guys know me, it's not, that, it's not that I really hate those series, but I've never... He hates I'm... Love Love. I just... I've never been a big fan of the... Th- of s- those themes. Like, in general. It's it's not that like a gen- I'm I'm not a big fan of just like what, robots. Space. Damn, you don't like Mecha? You don't like Gundam? 
It's not that I don't like them. It's just that they've never been super. Name up my your favorite alley. Gundam, huh? <laughs> I mean, if, it, if it's not on my alley, then it would oh, be. Oh yeah, me. you're not a Gundam fan, huh? Name your favorite <laughs> Gundam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three, three out of the four people in here like Gundam. So, uh, I mean, I admit, I admit, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Fine, fine. Let's, let's make something easier. that's super. Name popular. your favorite Mecha. Fuck. I don't really have a favorite mecha at all. Yeah, this guy doesn't like giant robots. He, he hates Japan. <laughs> um, but I've never been sort of a fan of that theme, Wait, especially what? since a lot of times with regards to stuff like Mubba, it tends to... How do I say this? It sometimes has a harder time juggling between the more sort of bigger theme and the fight scenes it wants to have and or the action scenes the action scenes it wants to have and the rom romance or rom com plot. So I mean, it was the same with, I want to say, Demon Bane, right? Where Demon Bane was like, it tried to add in a lot of action scenes and be very grandiose. But then along the way, the romance kind of got chucked in. And at the very end, it said, okay, no, you, all right, you, you, got, you got your romance ending. Muff Love is a little bit more is a bit better at distributing that between juggling between the rom-com and the action and the grandiose plot, whatever. Um, but I don't know. It's that sort of mixture is just not up my alley. I don't, I don't like it that much. You still have a name, your favorite Mecca. <laughs> I, Toast, I literally said I don't like this. You're, I know, and I, you're like, I, I do not this. believe that at all. Everyone has a favorite robot. Even even if it's not a giant robot, part, what's your favorite robot? I mean, I don't like a lot of the stuff a lot of the stuff in terms of like mecha that I've watched that I've been more partial to is not really Gundam. It's more just like uh Ridden the Lagrange, stuff like that that's much oh, more Ridden Lagrange Ew, what? Ew. <laughs> I mean, I Dude, literally yeah. said you were like, man, was like <laughs> name something. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe you. Idiot. Idiot. Ew, ew. <laughs> I mean, this is what I said, right? I don't really watch. Is that the one with the, with the with the dude dressed as a that 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 dude dressed as a maid? That's weird. No, I don't think so. No, I. Rena Legrand is is the one where the the, the girls pilot the robots, right? Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. That's your favorite? I don't want to say it's my favorite. I just said that those are the sort of thing things related to mechas that I've seen <laughs> more than anything else. And it's not really like I'm not really out here scraping all of the mecha series that I can watch. So I don't really I'm not I'm not even far from being a connoisseur, I wouldn't say I'm even rudimentary. I'm not even a beginner. I'm literally just looking at it from 500 miles away and being like, yeah, those are robots, I guess. Question mark. <laughs> that is literally the level I am at. <laughs> so, so what you're telling me is if you, see, if you see a robot in real life, you won't be able to tell if it's a human or a robot? You'll be tricked <laughs> that easily? <laughs> Maybe. It would, it, would probably depend on the, uh, it would probably depend on the actual design of a robot, right? Damn but anyways. Anyways. I I bet he doesn't even like Simpha Gear. <laughs> well, no, I, I like Simpha Gear. Then like why Simpha did you name Simpha Gear? I would have accepted that. Is I would have even. I guess it's asked... Mecha. Yeah, I guess it's Mecha. Yeah, no, did you're you not, right. Do you not know Junk Warrior and uh, what is it? <laughs> Kibiki are both made by the same dude. Well, just because it's made by the same person doesn't mean it's I'm... the same thing. <laughs> Damn. This guy doesn't even know Junk Warrior. See, so I would have even accepted something like a Mega Man or Astro Boy, but did not have any at all. Oh, I mean, like I'm, I'm okay with those. Oh, they're, those. Spire, they're robots. They count. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. It's not that, like, but I don't really have a favorite mecha to pick up, but anyways, that's that's on the side. I don't, I haven't done too much on that recently, so, you know, it's it's been pretty chill past two weeks. It's my uh, movies uh, have been a little you, bit, yeah? Let me ask you this, Fire. Uh, let's delve into your week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we need to start reviewing the series rather than delving into my weakness. Do you, do, you, do you celebrate Thanksgiving, Spire? Yes. Where is this going? Isn't is it? Didn't you already have Thanksgiving though? Oh, are you talking about like Korean, like Thanksgiving ish? You suck. Or like, what are you talking about? Yes. Um. Yes, that was September. Oh. But I also have, or I mean, not I, well, wait, guess, well, but my family. Also. We, we need to. What about what? What you? Uh, Nia, you celebrate Thanksgiving, right? Um. Yeah. We. Uh. My family skipped it this year, though, because like. It's more of like generally for wait, most people that I know, it's more of a day for just month. eating stuff. Yeah. Like, when's oh yeah when's uh when's canadian thanksgiving because ours is next month um two months when is it i always forget the day why do canadians have a thanksgiving anyway uh it was october 11th <laughs> um but yeah my family skipped it just because like <sighs> getting it like getting the whole family together for a fucking dinner is like really annoying Nobody in my family really likes turkey, to be honest. Like, Damn. yeah. So like, turkey is a little bit hard to make good, though. Is yeah. The problem. And like, you know, uh, only like half of us like ham. So typically, whenever there's like a family dinner, it's like you guys just have duck or like half, chicken. Like half of us are eating ham, and then like the other <laughs> half is like just ordered fucking Chinese food. It's like, well, let's just get duck or chicken. You, you uh, know. I, I've I've noticed there's a correlation between need to get... Jewish people and ordering Chinese on Thanksgiving. What's up with that? What the fuck is this I tangent? I mean, I'm I think not too sure what you're implying. Ordering like... Chinese food is. Well, yeah, let, let me just say. I, let I me mean, just say ordering it. Chinese for holidays is literally just like the laziest thing. To do. I just, <laughs> let me just say I know a dude. I know several dudes who say there's always a bunch of Jewish people who orders Chinese food on Thanksgiving, and I'm like, that's. That's a neat oh yeah, no, that's a thing. Well, I don't know about Thanksgiving on Christmas. That's a thing. That's like a thousand percent a thing. Yeah, like like I said, like just typical holiday like dinner stuff. Yeah, like the easiest thing you can do is just order a bunch of Chinese. Oh yeah, yeah I, like I mean Chinese it's also because it's like they don't they don't close. <laughs> yeah, they don't close on holidays. But uh, yeah, we didn't celebrate this year. Yeah. Okay. So Damn, I guess we had nothing to be thankful for. <laughs> uh, it's just fucking uh, near no, secret. Really just... Didn't you hear? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we do have to move on. So, m- by the way, uh, just a quick heads up on the schedule. I, I, I should probably say this at the end of the episode rather than in the middle. I don't know why I'm saying this at the end, but we'll we'll say it at the end anyways. But we are probably going to have. This episode, and then three more episodes after this, and then a preview show before we head into the winter season. But since we only do have around, you know, four episodes, including, I mean, three episodes, not including this one left, and there are a lot of series that might be good, might be, you know, something that might be good for us to cover and stuff like that, some more famous series on social media, whatever, uh, please do hit us up if you want something covered. So, yeah. Anyways. Damn, three? Why did I waste? Why did I waste a slot on this one then? Oops. <laughs> uh, no Mi is. Uh, well, oops. I, I'm sorry. I should, All right. I so let's it. start. Spoilers. I'll start off. I'll start. Sorry. Off sorry. Sorry. No. 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 Too no, 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 late. No. no it's okay, dark first. Dark needs to go first. No. You've already. You've already spoiled. You've already soiled <laughs> oh, the integrity of this podcast. I apologize. So oh, I'll okay. go first. It's fine. <sighs> All right. Do you what mind, did I cover? <laughs> fine. <laughs> Dude, okay, so Toast covers Shinkanomi, and I think it, it, he shouldn't downplay it. It's a quite an important series to cover, regardless of its quality, just because it's a big, like, it's a pretty popular series in Japan. Is it? Really? Shinkanomi is pretty popular, I think, right? Really? Okay, well, uh, okay. 
All right, so Shinkanomi, what's it about? You know. tell us. You got a Shimoto Hiro hanging out with other famous VAs doing stuff. <laughs> Sounds fun. So yeah, Shinkanomi is about some what's his, what's that guy's, guy's name? Seichi Hiragi. He's he's he, he's fat, ugly, and he smells. And he gets bullied, that's whatever. And then God shows up on their intercom, and he's like, hey, I'm God, sit in your seats, because he's in his classroom, and I'm going to transport you all into an isekai. And apparently, if you group up, you'll be transferred to the same place. So, say, but say he's the bullied one, so they kick his butt, and he gets transferred all by himself to a, a forest full of smart monkeys. And everyone else is in his classroom is, gets transferred to, you know, the, the traditional way. They get transferred to the kingdom, and the king's like, hey, we summoned you heroes to the other world to uh, be the demon king. They're like, okay, I guess. And then Seiichi's here, and, you know, the, the obviously ultra-dangerous forest, stronger than the demon lord's castle. Yeah. And then he gets beat up by a bunch of monkeys. And whatever, and then he f- he steals the monkey's fruit of evolution, which looks like a giant. It looks more like a nut. It's not really a fruit. It looks like a a giant almond, or a, or a coconut. And apparently, it, you know, it's a fruit. I guess, even <laughs> though it doesn't look like a fruit, he eats it, and he's like, "Oh, the pain." And he gets one evolution point. And apparently there's a rumor that if you eat 10 or 11, 11 whatever, 10, or 10 or 11 fruit of evolution, you'll advance to the, fine, the, the, the peak of whatever race you are. So mm-hmm. he b- eats a bunch of fruits and he gets thin, thinner and thinner. Then he finds a pink monkey because he's in a forest full of smart monkeys, which apparently have alchemy and tool skills, tool making skills of the highest grade. So he beats them up and he gains their skills and whatnot. But then the pink monkey takes a liking to him, and spoilers, it, it's a girl. So he hangs <laughs> out with the pink monkey for a while because the pink monkey named Saria wants to make her his husband. And then they, they, you know, they they find. They find what's that guy's name? I don't even remember. They they find the, you know the remains of a demon king, and he's all like, "Oh, but I'll kill you and shoot her." But then the monkey takes a blow for Seichi, and she's like, "No, oh, even though you're a monkey, I actually liked you. I guess." Then he beats. Then the he beats the. the the demon lord gets a bunch of skills and then the monkey levels up because the monkey was also eating the fruits of evolution. So <laughs> she turned and then it turns to the hot chick, the main character. Voiced by Akana Hanazawa. Who, who would have thought? What's the deal with these VAs in this show? I mean, as I said, you know, the the series is pretty popular and it also got a lot of money behind it so you know it's it's not it's not you know this this voice acting cast yeah. isn't just you know it's just, just there it's it's an actual thing who, 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 which studio is making this it's hotline studios the it's not a very it's not it's like a tier like Producer. three studio they've done very weird stuff before like children's you know, playground Enter- oh, it's a children's playground entertainment ah uh, really they're also doing a uh, Saihate no Paladin this season? Damn. Yeah. I can see. Feel Studios, Children's Playground Entertainment. Uh, yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> Feel yeah. Kisses. Feel's probably uh, named. K- Kisses, Yos- Yosuga, Nosora. I mean, I, you shouldn't be surprised by most of these. Feel Studios has been in the game for obviously. A- quite a while by now yeah. so it's not really i mean seeing doesn't some of these feel, names it definitely not, doesn't yeah. feel like a feel work then it, it's like this one i see i some mean good ones. I, I see freaking what shikibani hime here bikini warriors 
Capo? Yeah, I mean, they've also yeah. done, like, they did what? What did Guy do? They did Kashitake, yeah, damn, what is this? Calco, like, they fucking... Wait, did, they, around wait, did Feel... Did feel, was Feel the one that really did Yusugana Soda? I thought that would have yeah, been, no, like... Uh, yeah, they did. Fuck. What the heck okay. is this? I thought somebody else did it. I thought, like... It's, it wasn't... I, I don't know who I thought it did Yusugana Soda. I thought maybe... It wasn't JC staff. Maybe I thought, like, fucking... Maybe I don't know. Wow, feel did do it. <laughs> okay. If, I mean, no, not feel. Yeah, feel. Feel's got some really good anime on the build, but they make this. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. This one. This one looks like very old school. You know what I mean? It looks like a very. It looks like it reminds me of. Um, it's zero no skyma levels of like. It's you know what I mean? Definitely, it's uh, definitely early two thousands level yes, of uh, yes, animation. Yes. Is what I would say. But yeah. He, he, Pink the the pink monkey evolves into the pink haired main character, and now they're they they, they met the, the only other maybe the only other character worth mentioning in this series uh the brown haired the brown no, the brown girl with uh, white hair voiced by Marina Inoue near mm-hmm. guess what her name is what Get, take a guess. <laughs> I don't know, fucking Dave? Like what? Artoria Grimm. Wowee. <laughs> or, or as it says on my anime list, Altria. Yeah. They say Artoria, so... Still a fucking awful romanization of Artoria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's voiced by Marina anyway, obviously making her the best character in the series. By far. Wrong. The, the yeah. only other contender would be the one that hasn't appeared yet. Luis Balls, Balls, eh? Balls, Balls, yeah, Balls. Voiced by Yoko Hikasa, so I'm gonna wait for that. How do you How do you feel about the general? I mean, not, I mean, not the VA. Idea. I don't. I have don't have any complaints about the VAs because they're they're fine. They're, they're yeah. So. No, I wasn't talking about the VAs. I was just talking about in terms of just general isekai being put out. How do you How do you feel about oh, it this? Sucks. Oh, it sucks. Okay, <laughs> it sucks. It's pretty bland and generic. I guess <laughs> it's supposed to be halfway comedic due to the the art style and how Seiji's face is drawn and his reaction faces. Maybe mm-hmm. that's why they hired a Shimano hero to do it because he's good at uh Sukomi. <laughs> Definitely his his good role. So I mean, like, yeah, great. I mean, all, to be fair though. Shimono Hiro, especially in the recent years, I want to say when did he really start like trying to do serious? I think it was actually um, Hataraku Mao Sama around that time where he did that like one evil guy role. I think that was around the time where he got he started getting a little like this more of a trickle of sort of more serious ish roles, right? And like main character roles that aren't completely just comedic all the time, although. Inevitably, yeah, well, I think every role that he has is at least like there's a minimum requirement. Twenty percent of it requires him to use his yeah, comedic I voice. Mean, right? Now he's fucking Zenitsu in Kimetsu no Yaiba. So yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so what about uh, what's the what's the one where the, where he had to take care of that one girl and it was really good? What what's it called? Was that was that not Shimona Hero? Which one? Which series are you talking about? Uh, it's the one where he had to take care. Oh, she, oh, it's Kakushigoto, right, or whatever it was. No, 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 no. The the one the the fucking one by sh- the the Sarna Zespo. Is that what the I'm, one you're talking? I'm thinking no, of. I'm not. thinking of the pet girl Sakura. So, but that's Matsuo. Sakura? So? Is Sakura? So? Was that? Uh, no. I'm I, wasn't Sakura so y- Yoshitsuka? Yeah, that, that's the wrong guy. Whoops, they sound the same. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, what else? Okay. What, what, what's tough again? Oh, yeah. So all all they did in four episodes is not nothing. Nothing really. There's no real world building. Yeah, I wasn't too surprised. <laughs> Surprise! Random it's hero. Just... The guy becomes really popular and just does whatever he wants. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like me. Just like me. <laughs> pretty, it's pretty cookie cutter, I guess. I mean, 
There's no real world building. It's just, hey, Sage, you good things happen to you because you used to be a fat guy. But you got lucky because you ate the fruit of evolution. My favorite part of the series is uh, when he when he analyzes the fruit of evolution, it's a little it's the literal title drop. Like the actual uh, the key art for the series, the title, it, that's what he gets when he appraises it. And I'm like, damn. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Well. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna bash the whole. I, I I used to be a fat loser, and then I I turned into a handsome Ikemen because uh, in the uh, in the isekai, and I'm not gonna bash fat dudes turning their life around. But uh, it's not very. It's not written well. Yeah, mm-hmm. fat dudes turning their life around with absolutely zero effort. Dang. If you want, if you want, if you want a, uh, if you want a series where a fat dude turned his life around and did it better, it's called a. It's called Excel World. <laughs> yeah, you, you you saw that guy's animation, the fat guy's like model, and you thought exactly the same thing as I did, right? Excel World. <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's one of two fat protagonists in anime. <laughs> Bro, if it's fat, it's not like me at all. Okay, I can't empathize with that. <laughs> yeah, he has to be cool and skinny and awesome. Yeah. What other fat and tat? Doyle gets the crowd. That's just like me, bro. <laughs> or or a monogatari. That guy's not fat. He's just a gorilla. But he was a good dude, so no, no, you can't hate him for that. No. Apparently, there was a uh, live action or a monogatari. I gotta check that out. Looks good. <laughs> but yeah, what is this series? It's pretty average. Um, do, do you, studio. Does it look good? I guess. Fine. But it like like we said earlier, it definitely has that uh, early two thousands feel. Mm-hmm. That's why it's kind of jarring sometimes when you compare it to the other stuff this season. Mm-hmm. So, Sage he's drawn like an ugly, uh, he's drawn kind of ugly, but uh, girls are drawn fine. I want to say that the, this artist is definitely better at drawing girls than dudes by far. Okay. Uh, the opening, yeah, it's whatever. Unless, unless this opening is done by like Kotoko or somebody, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the best opening I've ever. It's, yeah, that's, is it average? No, kind of throwaway. <laughs> it's not even average. You're just who like, made yeah. it? I don't know who this is. It's Yushin. Wait, it's wait, wait. Yushin Nanjo saying it. What the fuck, that... hey, dude? <laughs> That Yoshino Nanja is um Love Live, yeah. okay. Not that no, good. she's she, yeah, I mean that too, Wait, but she's also one of the life. members of freaking Sprip Side, dude. Dude, huh? all the, you mean only my railgun? What yes, Damn. did you not know? No, did you know? I, know, I <laughs> only know only my railgun. Oh my god. She, only that's my like real literally gun is the, the only song they've ever released. That's yeah, the, no, no, that's good. That's like yeah, like Yoshino Nanjo is, is the person who did Fripside and was the one that's saying, yeah, the Railgun stuff. Yes. I believe she's saying like pretty much all of the Railgun stuff, right? All right, can you confirm? I don't even know. <laughs> Dark, I Dark, you should know everything. <laughs> yeah, open yeah. up your fucking database brain of Railgun knowledge, dude. <laughs> but yeah, um, anyways, uh, uh, anything else? Yeah, the ending sucks. <laughs> the ending sucks. I mean, I'm gonna. There's a bunch of uh, art. There's a bunch of sprite work they use in this game or it's game, the series. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm towards the uh, I'm towards the the thought pattern that if you use a bunch of art like sprite RPG stuff in your in in the series that Hurley has has no good reason to use it. You're just you're just pandering off towards. the the uh, Dragon Quest lovers, which is basically everyone in Japan, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's low hanging fruit, man. That's bait. That, that's that's copium right there. You gotta say, hey, we got RPG elements. You like Dragon Quest? Check this series out. And I'm like, I'm not falling for that. No thanks. <laughs> oh, this is wow. They there's so much money in this, except for like the studio that they. Actually, no. Field Studio is fine. 
but there's so much money going into this. They're like the opening theme is done by Yoshino Nanjo. The ending theme is done by that uh, Bang Dream, um, Bang Dream uh, band or whatever that they made from the the different voice actresses or whatever it is. Like Aimi, uh, what is it? Ohashi, Ayaka, stuff like that. Ito Ayase. There's a lot of money going into this. Jesus Christ. It's a lot of money. Why is it so average? It's like. Jesus. I mean, the you can only, you can, you can, you can only you know, pump so much money into a fucking turd, dude. You, you realize, you realize, guilty, you know, guilty crowd also got a lot of money. <laughs> you can't say much about Japan's. Well, yeah, was and it was a... fucking epic. Point, yeah, right? that's true. I apologize. It was the greatest year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What else? Uh, uh... I know Marie Inouye is pretty cool. I like Marie Inouye a lot. She's 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 always been in my top three VAs. Uh, would, you, would I recommend checking this series out? No, probably not. It's people are comparing it to you know Tsukimichi, and I'm like, where the hell are you getting that? Tsukimichi is has a lot of world building, good character development. And you know, it was leagues better than this one, but they're like, oh, but, but you know, mo- monster girls turning to humans just like Tsukimichi. New the journey. I'm like, damn, you really went there, huh? Mm-hmm. So, it, I do. I think this series is gonna go anywhere. No, not at all. <laughs> Thinking that this series is gonna go, I don't think anybody is going to think that except like the types of people who. Are fans of you know shit like Ori no Sera for you it's know twelve episodes? It's definitely twelve episodes, isn't that? Is it not? Yeah, it's probably twelve episodes. Same Maybe it'll get twenty four, depending. Twelve, on. yeah, it's twelve. Oh yeah. Is it? Uh... You'll, you'll probably get second season sometime like in two two seasons later, and then you know all that. Shit. How are people yeah. saying this is like Ari Furita? What? Damn. Yeah, okay, is this better than Ari Furita? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what they. Mm. At the, I mean, at this point, it's just like there's there. Like I don't even want to. Like, I literally don't want to like think about the like anything related to Ari Freta in my head. I don't want that shit entering into my brain cells. I don't want to be speaking about it. I don't want to be uttering that. I don't. I don't. Anywhere. <laughs> I don't see how this is related to Ari Freta. He's, he's not going on a revenge journey. He's not yeah, some not. edge lord with a gun. He's just fumbling around like these super typical the kind of protagonist and he's not very interesting the only interesting thing is when he killed when he was killing a, when he was killing the smart monkeys with his body odor that was, that was cool I was like yeah I, I remember that panel in the manga Pinky boy mm-hmm. would I recommend this series? no I'm still not going to recommend it <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll rate it a uh... here comes the 8 Seven point five out of ten. I, I yeah, like I, I like I like Marina Inoue's voice, and I'm waiting for Yoko Hikasa to turn this around. <laughs> turn this car around, yeah. I mean, otherwise, they got friggin' Satomi Arai as a random ass sheep, and I'm like, what? How how dare you? Yeah. I still don't know how this has so much money. All right. Anyways, thank you, yeah, Toast, for don't, yeah. don't don't watch it. I mean, literally, there's the other. See, there's the other series by the same studio that's in this season, and it's definitely written way better. Yeah, I'm talking about Sai Hate no Paladin. I'll skip that over and watch that one instead. Even though yeah, I'm not I mean, that's a good suggestion. It. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, are you? Who are you gonna talk about it? Because I wasn't. I'm probably gonna talk about it. I mean, yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, just just watch just just watch Sign Hot No Paladin instead. Okay, uh, thank you, Toast, for at least helping helping to cover again. It's a little bit unfortunate that it, the, you know, it, it's the sort Unfor- of series. So. Unfortunate. I it was <laughs> I I didn't have any high hopes for this series in the first place. Well, what I'm saying is unfortunate in that it couldn't be better than maybe some of your expectations. But um, again, thank you for covering. What expect? Uh, <laughs> What expectations? <laughs> I read the manga. And I'm like, that is true. That is true. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you don't have wor- if you don't have good world building, 
It's like, why should I even care that you're an Itsuka? You might as well just... Bro, but the girls, the, the slave girls and the... Oh, and the... Why, do, <laughs> why does it always have to be slave? Why does it always have to be demi-human slave girls? Because the, it's not it's not even about them following you. I think I think okay, so so my premise for Because you have to I, be superior to women. Yeah. <laughs> In all God damn it, yeah. But uh, it's twenty twenty so, it's twenty twenty one, you know. I, so my theory Yeah, my theory for why uh, a lot of these lazy Japanese fan fiction isekai writers use slave girls. It's actually not about the whole like it's not about keeping them because they're slaves. It's more just like I think it's the initial hook, right? Because it's the idea is that they're a slave girl and they've been mistreated because they're slaves or because of racism, classism, whatever the fuck, right? And that's their initial premise. So then the main character sees them and saves them from their plight, rescues them from their plight. And that's the hook. That's the whole, as, as I always say in rom -com, when I'm trying to describe rom-com stories, that's the rescuing the cat from the tree, right? So you gain karma with them by helping them out, you know, being nice to them as their owner, I guess, the master. Well, if they're a slave, or by freeing them as they're, if they're a slave or whatever it is. And that being a slave is like the initial hook. It's like being the childhood friend as the initial hook, or it's like being the, you know, tsundere, you know, blonde haired ujo-sama as the hook, right? It's the thing that gets the girl in the door in this rom-com or harem story. At least, I, I think that's what I believe. You know, if this, if they were, if they were alluding to the type of slavery here in the West, this would. Fly <laughs> man, at all. Man, I don't think Japan. I don't think those writers know anything about any of that shit, like at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I can understand the Christian persecution because that happened. I watched that on. It, I I remember that for Roroni Kenshin, where they had to step on the picture of Jesus, and everyone got angry. Mm -hmm. Also, there wasn't that one of the. Uh, uh, Max Kashiro, he was in a f Fade Apocrypha. I remember that. But I mean, why, why, what's the deal with... I, I just don't get the slave thing, man. It's, it's boring. It's 2021. Sla slavery is overrated. <laughs> you, 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 you should, That's one you way should, of putting it. You should have... Uh, you should... You should try to be more postmodern. Do you have and have a reverse racism? You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, reverse wow. racism. I don't think that's it. <laughs> I don't know if that means what you think it means, but okay. <laughs> what's that series like? What's what's I that series think... about the? Uh... Uh... What's that? What's that? Human Ranch. Yeah, why, when's the Human Ranch anime adaptation? <laughs> if you don't know what Human Ranch is, it's the one where... Uh, it's the one where... Spoiler... Not really spoilers, where uh, people get... A bunch of humans get isekai to, an, to a human ranch farm and they get eaten by elves. All right, anyways. Thank you, Toast, for covering Shinkanomi. Uh, oh, right. That was a series. Full name is Shinkanomi Shiranai Uchi ni Kachikumi Jinsei, The Fruit of Evolution. Before I knew it, my life had it made. And this is by Field Studio. It is a original Shosetsu uh, web novel adaptation gone into a light novel adaptation. So if you're interested in the original content, check that out. And next, Dark. What do you have for us? Boy, I have Senpai Uzai. Uh, hmm. or a full one, Senpai ga Uzai Kohai no Hanashi. Yes. Um, and uh, this one's pretty good. Uh, so it, this it's, is it's a... Been, it's been a long time coming, let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, this is a manga original. Um, mm -hmm. And the synopsis is... Hirashi Futaba's new job would be great if her... Well, see, like, I don't even fully agree with how the synopsis present, presents this. Uh, but yeah, so Futaba, the green-haired girl, uh, her new job would be great if her senpai, Takeda Harumi, the big guy, 
Uh, wasn't so incredibly annoying. Futaba hates his laugh. She hates how big he is. She hates that he treats her like a little kid. Just because Futaba is short and looks young doesn't make her a kid. And just because she spends so much time with Takeda doesn't mean she sees him as anything but an annoying senpai. Or does she? So that synopsis yeah. is garbage. Um, Got to throw the, it out there. It, uh, first what's of all, the meme? What's huh? the meme? 5'11 uh, versus 6 feet? Is that the meme? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, hey, listen, she's like picking me height, really, when Cora so according like, to what we've learned. So, like, yeah. three feet? Damn. Oh, uh, yeah, no, Pygmy's apparently Pygmy said, four foot four. <laughs> yeah, Pig, Pygmy said she's, like, 135 centimeters tall. Jesus Christ. Uh, what the fuck? Like, That's, like, an elementary like, schooler. It's, like, four foot five, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know. Although, you I, know. I've, heard, I've heard of people that are who are, like, 100 feet. 48 or something like that. I've but I've never heard people legend, these legendary I've, creatures. I've never heard of like yeah. adults that are like 130 or whatever. I mean, I I've known a couple of people that are like 5 foot, but not like below 5 feet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like Yeah, I think my I'm not mistaken, I think my brother is dating someone who's like 4 foot 5 or something around there. Um, damn, how much does she weigh? I think you say <laughs> you're saying she's she's 1 inch above like being legally classified as like a dwarf, so, <laughs> legally classified. <laughs> yeah, or however you call it. Like, well, I mean, that w- would it be legal classification? So, so, it's, so it's like you get you get your like. I don't know if it's a like legal classification. Right. It's like a technical classification. Whatever. D D and D guide classification. <laughs> so so she, so it's she's so she's a giant among. A shorter group, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting, like, weird proficiencies. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, she's, like, she's a dwarf plus one. Yeah, <laughs> her her blacksmithing gets plus ten. It's insane. Um, But, yeah. So, anyway. I think... So, I think that synopsis kind of sucks. Uh, I don't know where it's from. But it's a really shitty synopsis. Because I'm not sure how the manga starts. But the show... Starts with Futaba already being at this company for like two years, um, but she's still the newest member. Um, Damn, so, a black company. Yeah, so I mean, it's definitely not a black company. <laughs> like, at least from One... from from what we've seen in the show, that they're they're just the office workers. They're definitely not a black Entire company. In two years? Like... That's kind of sus, though. Huh? It's kind of sus. I like a small just... office not really unless it's like on her floor only or something i don't know either way she's not new to the company when going introduces us um she already has a history with like all the characters essentially have decent history with each other um so i would have to look into that to see if that's the case for the manga and that's why um because the show also doesn't start with her disliking um, Takeda either. Like, they still have a, like, fine relationship. Like, she does do Sunday shit, but not to the point where, like, she's any sort of, like, aggressor towards him. Or, like, disliking anything he does. Um, it's more of just not wanting, like, to openly admit to doing things. Like, to spending time with him and shit like that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a pretty weird synopsis to have chosen. Hmm. Um, but overall, yeah, that's basically that, that's basically the show. is kind of, like, focuses on those two, but then has, like, the supporting cast of couples as well. Um, and so you have, as, like, the supporting cast, you have uh, Sakurai Toko, which is the... Which is another like office worker, um, and she like has like small like flirt things with uh, like one of the other friends, Kazuma Soto. Um, and then there's like there's two other side characters that really haven't shown up yet, which is the this dark skinned girl Natsumi, and I think a high schooler, um, Sakurai Yuto. So. They haven't, their stuff hasn't shown up yet. I've only seen their stuff in like, um, Shiromanta's like posts on Twitter, essentially. 
So there's that. Uh, but yeah, so this is definitely a very, um, a very fun show. Uh, it, it, so far, like, it hasn't really done, as far as, like, premise-wise, it hasn't done much new in that sense of, like, something you but, I mean, wouldn't Dogo, have seen Dogo, before. But, I mean, it's not like, Dogo Kobo isn't really, they're not, it's not, they're not Bones or, you know, Madhouse, or they're not the types of people who kind of go out and do, like, dramatic, weird stuff, right? They're literally, they know their strengths extremely, yeah. extremely, yeah. extremely well. So well. <laughs> like, like more well than anybody else in, like, the entire known universe. Except for maybe uh, Yesterday with Utate, right? The, the Utate. Um, yeah, I think that was Except probably for the, that. I think that's probably the furthest they ventured. Yeah. They also did Eleven Eyes, which is weird, but not, yeah. you know, you know, that was like a long time ago. But beyond that, like they just know every they just know their stuff so well. And it's one of the strengths of the Kobo is just doing that very well and being like, Yeah, this is a comfy series. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then just, yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely, it's definitely a very cozy series. I would say where it does start to separate itself a little bit is um is is sort of like when all the pieces come together. Um, sort of like the characters, the way they treat each other, the sort of like work relationship uh, stuff that comes into play. Um, I think all of that coming together does make it like set itself apart from other things. Um, as far as, like, interactions go, it's nice that you do get thrown into, like, essentially the in media res, like, you know, we're not, we're not actually doing what the synopsis said, you know? Like, I think the series would be way more boring. Um, again, I don't know if this happens in the manga, which would be way more forgivable. But at least for the show, I like how it started where it's, you know, it's she's been in the company for two years. Like, all these characters already know each other. We're not fucking having to get through, like, three episodes to get to, like, any sort of decent character interaction. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I thought that that was really good, too. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah kind I, of, it kind of... It, the, the interesting thing is it's not... I think the people, at least, I mean, obviously the source material is very good, right? Like, it's, it's I don't think, objectively, it, there's not much to complain about it. But it's also the storyboard staff for Duokopo, and I guess the general like, direction, storyboard, scriptwriter people, are also quite on the mark when it comes to doing stuff like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm not really sure what else to say. Audio visuals wise, it is what you would expect from Dogakobo. Um, mm. By the way, I was I was just reading this, and or I was going through the page for the voice actress for the main character, right? Uh, Futaba, Igarashi Futaba, and. She had like one main role, one big main role in, um, in Sword Art Online Sword Alternative. Alternative. Yeah, yeah. Gungale Online, which is big. And then she was like, she got like stuff here and there, and it was pretty quiet for, for a bit. And then this, like these past like one or two couple of seasons, right? She, or yeah, in, in the past like year or so, right? She immediately started picking up roles, more, like main roles more and more. And I was like, what, what caused this all of a sudden? And it was the fact that she appeared, she was she is one of the main characters in the newest generation, I believe. I don't need, I, I don't keep up these days, but it's uh Nijigasaki Gakuen for Love Life. So the newest generation for Love Life, right? And yeah, like Love right Life after really that. Neat. Like yeah. that, huh? Yeah, so so literally after that, she started like stacking up man roles at one after another. I'm like I fucking hate Japan sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's good that she got the, all these main roles. Like, I, I think she's fine. Like, she, she's a good yeah. voice actor. Right. So, I mean, she, she, has, she has quite a bit of, like, range, too. Like, it's yeah, also yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, nice yeah. that she hasn't really been... She hasn't really been casted consistently, as far as from what I've seen. Like, she's had... Well, I mean, so she's had two cool, like, 
as far as I've seen. So she's had two like cooler characters, like in like uh, was it Mal Gakuin? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. she played a cool headed character, and then in Wonder Egg Priority, um, she played like the cool aloof character Nehru. So, and then right, you know right. you have Sal, this, and then you have more of like the tomboy decadence type character. <laughs> Right. So there is she she's been getting a lot of like varying stuff, which is nice too. So I'm here I'm seeing a professional lolly voice. Fire, right, can you confirm? A professional lolly voice. I mean what? I guess. What's, what's, what's I guess. Just saying about her? Not really though. Honestly, for again, me, like Nehru, yeah. Nehru, like her like she can she can do that like for Sal and for this, but then again, you have like the character from Mal Gakuin and Nehru and Decadence, yeah. which is not that. And which Assassin's was, like, her, Pride. Like, I mean, there, 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 there's, there's a decent like number of voice actresses, I think in my mind, who could do like the standard, like kind of more squeaky, like, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a little girl. I'm like, uh, I'm running around and being impish and doing whatever, right? There's a bunch of characters, there's a bunch of voice actresses that can do that. But in my mind, if you're just like, hey, there's a young child, like an innocent young child role, name somebody to voice that character. It would 100% be Misaki Kuno, who voiced, uh, Kuno Misaki, who voiced um, Ichihara Nina in The Auto Master. And that person is literally like a professional, like young girl voice actors. What it about uh, what about uh, Horia Yui or that that one? Uh, what what's her name? That one uh, that you really like that you that you were perving out on for a while. <laughs> Ogura Yui. What are you? Um, no, yeah, Ogura Yui does a very standard. But I mean, yeah. She, the thing is, it's like Ogre Yu is just naturally that, like, her higher, like, kind of almost falsetto ish tone is a generally. I would, compare, like... I would compare Tomori Kusunoki to. Um, what's her name? Uh, Kana Asumi? Yes. I would, yes. I would, okay, I would where, compare where they're, to that. They're, they're doing, like, very, like, Sekunayo or like you know these very like impish like you know those voices right but yeah there there's a there's there's i mean obviously there so 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 to put it into uh modern day terms spire yeah are are you saying that uh she she's the uh the yanners of lolly voices Stop. Or, I, I, I or, was like, where are you going with this? I was like, or should this I went in the worse direction than I or, 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 or should I say to be more uh, to be more mainstream, the Gargura of Lolly Voices? <sighs> Please stop this. Anyways, anything else that you want to cover, Dark? Uh, yeah. The main, the other main, Takeda, is also a um, I mean, he's not he's not newer, but he doesn't have like a ton of roles. Mm-hmm. Um, was it uh, Shunsuke Takeuchi? Right. Um, and uh, he should get more because voice is real, <laughs> real good. He's real cool. He's he was also a brawler in Akudama Drive. Oh uh, shit! Okay. Yeah, and it's it's only slightly depressing. That he looks the way he looks and is a year younger mm-hmm. and sounds that way. But you know. Uh but yeah, I would say voice cast has been really good. Um the again the audio visuals are good enough. Like I mean, I think they're good enough, they're fine. Like they're not incredible. Um but it's what you would want. It's what you would expect. And mm-hmm. the like sort of style was adapted fine. Okay. Premises. Yeah, I mean again, fun. I wouldn't so, if if Doga Kobo I don't think what's the last thing that we were like Doga Kobo fuck this up. I don't think I can what what maybe that hero series is though you know that though the Yusha series, right? That's like the one that comes the closest, but even that wasn't like it wasn't like that was terrible, right, or anything like that. 
right? Recently? What? Recently? I mean, like... if you ask Ritsu, uh, <laughs> Hoka Gote but Nishi. <laughs> if you ask him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hoka Gote but Nishi, Nishi was... I mean, it was very like it was a relatively straight adaptation, right? If I remember correctly. Oh no, there was truncations. There were random. Well, I mean, there were yeah, there were truncations, like, and there was. But a, in terms of like the general content, lot, it was. Well, there's yeah. pretty decent style change. Yeah. Like yeah. it was much. It was much thinner lines for the show. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But other than that, like, no, Koba has had on. I mean, it's not like they were. There's. How do I say this? No, Koba's lot in life isn't super weighty, right? They're not animating something that's extremely hard to animate or trying to do stuff that's very extremely hard or has never been done before necessarily, right? You you really um, putting on Hida no Arya on blast like that? Damn. <laughs> that's true. I apologize. Damn dude but, scrolling through Doug Kova, I'm like, shit, I forgot about this. That rocked. <laughs> to be <laughs> so, fair, okay, Sessio says Umara, so what up? I want to be in part. I want to be a little bit impartial. And I mean, say they that, didn't fuck up Umaru. Umaru yeah, yeah. The thing is, from yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, how we're talking. It's, not, it's, they, like, it's a they weak. It's just because. Umaru perfectly yeah. Fine. It's yeah, yeah, Umaru exactly. It's like we can we can not like Umaru. Concept. That's fine. But Umaru, like the adaptation part of it, was fine. Like it was well done in terms yeah, of like Koi going Hime from Buso? the. Monster. I gotta check that out again. Like, oh, man, right, oh, man, so man they girl, kind of fucked that up. Nice. Yeah, I remember they fucked up Koimi and Musou because they didn't put the main character in there. They made like a Yuri series. Yeah, that, that was. But a, I mean, that was like that was a decade, a very yeah. long time. Ago. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was like a, a decade. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you. Say, I was for scrolling. Helping. I haven't even gotten to that yet. So that <laughs> we're. God, I fucking remember going through both seasons of Koimi and Musou, and I was like, "When is? Why did they turn this into a Yuri series? Why the fuck did they turn when this into the main character show? Yeah, up? exactly. It's like here's this harem series. Let's turn it into a Yuri series. It's like, why would you do this? <laughs> do you not understand the premise of yeah. this visual novel? <laughs> but yeah, anyways, uh, that was dark covering senpai goes kawaii no hanashi, uh, or my senpai is annoying. Thank you, Dark, for helping to cover this series. And what's if you your rating like... of it, Dark? Yeah, what's your what's your uh, mouse score? <laughs> out of ten, fucking. I mean, for what it is, ten out of ten. Yeah, like how yeah. many points? Yeah. How many yeah. dwarfs out of ten? Do you rate this series? <laughs> exactly. You should you should just pull a toast. Be like, it was shitty. Uh, seven. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. dog shit, and I don't recommend it. And I kind of hate watching fun? it. I think I'd give it like an eight. <laughs> oh, I love toast, honestly uh so yeah that was but the yeah. series so i i would recommend you give it a watch if you want something yeah uh, pretty like pretty cozy um but yeah and uh yeah just go go watch dogakoba stuff if you if you haven't why not you know good stuff thank you dark and Next on is Nier. Wow. Uh, I watched uh, Platinum and uh, Oh, it's that's so yeah. edgy. It already yeah, sounds so it's cool. Fucking, it's cool and awesome. <laughs> so this is a um, I don't really know what genre this would be, but it's it's shown in. Apparently, it feels more like a you just call it supernatural, movie. right? Supernatural yeah, slash supernatural. Maybe some like, there will be like a horror tag on it, and some on some sites or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. It's a thriller, fucking something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's apparently a shonen. Uh, I would. It it feels more like a seinen to me, um, but I, I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, this is a Signal MD, uh, production. They've done. Uh, what did they do? They did it, uh, Dragon Ghost House Hunting recently. They did uh, the Fake Grand Order Camelot movie. Um, a bunch of other movies. Uh, and like a bunch of assistant stuff. And then they did uh, Netju no Susume. You know, they're pretty. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. They don't do a whole lot. But yeah, um, you know, they've done stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is a manga original from 
the creator of Death Note. Wow. You already know it's got to be quality. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this show is fucking awesome. Um, I can be your is, angle or I can be your devil. <laughs> yeah. Is is this the reason why Death Note's getting a, what is it, a sequel-ish? Was it getting a sequel? Or like oh. a continuation? I don't they, think this, I don't think this has anything to do with it. I think it's they I recently think it, that did probably a, more of the fact that Death Note is an absurdly popular series um, on its own. But yeah. Uh, the, the premise for this show, series, whatever, is... Uh, our main character, uh, Mirai Kakehashi, uh, he's 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 a, he's sad. He's a sad boy. Um, he's got no friends. Uh, his family uh, died in a fucking car explosion. Um, and uh, yeah, the series do. basically the series basically starts off. Um, he was I'm dying. sad. He's yeah. he's sad. He wants to die. Uh, he jumps off a building, um, but then he gets he gets caught by an angel. Um, oh, boy, yeah, he gets saved by an angel, and uh, the angel says, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I I want to make you happy, forehead. Um, just stop being sad." And uh, in order to do that, uh, she gives him wings, uh, which lets him Red like, fly at like fucking speed of light or some shit um and uh arrows uh she gives him a red arrow which uh whoever whoever gets shot with the red arrow uh falls madly in love with you and will do pretty much whatever you say uh mm-hmm. kind of deal and uh later on it's revealed that he also has a white arrow that uh that kills people <gasps> wow regular yeah. arrow they die when they're shot um <laughs> like, and like, wait hold on is it like death note style where they insta die you yeah, can they write just, they just die they die they you just can, die. so, so you if you die in real them, life yeah they die when they are killed they just drop dead so so um, if you write on the arrow the cause of death they die that way damn no they just drop dead they literally just cease living they stop they stop alive so yeah. that's like a, it's like a lazier death note damn um, oh, wow, sure. a, ki- yeah, a killing a, arrow. Yeah, How original. You shoot somebody with a big fucking spike and they die. Um, shocker. But uh, yeah, and then um, basically the, the general uh, premise is that uh, our main character is one of 13 people uh, chosen by angels to uh, essentially become the next god. Uh, As you do. Yeah, because uh, in this in this world, uh, God is uh, he's just a guy, um, and eventually guy or a girl, uh, either or, you know. Um, just making yeah. sure we're we're safe in twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah, it is, the current, <laughs> it is the current year. Um, but yeah, they uh, the angels just like pick people um, that have like have basically given up on life, uh, and I guess. It's the angels' jobs to like, uh, you know, give them salvation and a reason to like want to, you know, uh, become God. Um, yeah, uh, in this world, God is just like a guy, and I guess eventually he's just like, I'm kind of done. I'm done. I don't, I don't want to be God anymore. Uh, and so they held this, uh, weird, like, not really sort of pseudo battle royale. Apparently, uh. People that apparently the thirteen people aren't supposed to kill each other, um, but as it turns out, there's there's one guy that's killing other the other people. So damn. So he's the th- oh, yeah, that's why there's business. that's why he's the thirteenth angel. One yeah. of them's Lucifer. I get but, it. Uh, oh. But yeah, the basic idea is main character is sad boy. He he doesn't really want to use his powers. Uh, he doesn't really want to be God that much either. Um, but you know he got saved by the angel, so he he basically has to do this uh, because he can't give up the fucking wings or the arrows uh, without dying. Because of course you know you're not allowed to. You can't just opt out of the death game because otherwise you die. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. If you, you die in the commit, death game, you die in real life. Yeah. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, the main character uh, ends up teaming up with uh, another person who is competing uh, to be God, uh, who just so happens to be his childhood friend slash crush, uh, the a cute girl um, who's what's her name, uh, Saki Hanakago, uh, who's voiced by Mao Ichimichi. Um, oh yes. Also known as Mao, yes. Yeah, and uh, the the childhood crushes Angel is like he's like a uh, he's a what is he? He's a second rate angel, right? So the angels have rankings, right? And so depending on what rank your angel is uh, when they save you, uh, it depends like what powers you get, right? So the main character. He has a special class angel, right? Um, and his angel's name is Nase. Uh, and she's a cute girl. She's very genki. She's like, I guess, the comedic relief of the series. Yeah. Um, and because what she's special, yeah. yeah, she's special class. Uh, and so the main character gets he gets the wings, he gets the red arrow, and he gets the white arrow, right? Um, and yeah, he so he he gets all he gets everything. He's he's fucking awesome, cool. Um, and then first class angels get uh, the wings and the red arrow, but they don't get the white arrow, right? Um, and then second class angels get either wings or a red arrow, right? And so uh, I'm pretty sure sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure um, Saki, the the childhood crush girl, I'm pretty sure her angel is like a second rate angel, and she only has uh, the red arrow. And when they first meet, she like shoots him. She shoots the main character with the red arrow, I guess to try to like, you know, essentially make sure that he doesn't fucking kill her. But then it's like, well, he had feelings for her anyway, so the the arrow doesn't really do much. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, but yeah, her her angel is like a super manipulative, like strategist dude. Um, so he's like, I guess the plan maker. But yeah, they team up, and the I guess the crux of the plot right now is essentially, um, there's this dude, uh, who's going around and killing uh the other um god candidates is what they call it, like the other people that are potentially uh able to become god and you know you're not really supposed to do that um but you know they they give them an arrow that enables you to kill anybody so i, I don't really know what they expected to happen <laughs> um, it's like surprise yeah it's like damn i can kill people i, I guess i'll i guess i'll do that um, <laughs> but yeah he he goes around and he dresses up like a fucking uh basically like a fucking uh common rider um and he's like larping as a fucking superhero he's flying around like stopping criminals and shit um and he uses like his media presence uh as like this larping superhero to essentially openly challenge um all of the other candidates right and you know he he lures them into traps and stuff like that and like the episodes three and four, uh, there's four episodes out right now. But episode three and four, uh, essentially, what happens in them is like he has this open challenge. Like he rents out the fucking like baseball stadium, and he has this open challenge where it's like, yeah, come to this uh, baseball stadium on this day, and and you know we'll we'll talk things out, bro. I want I want a peaceful <laughs> solution, and of course. Uh, the main character is like, that's a trap. So we're going to go anyway. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, they go and obviously they don't, they don't want to like, they're just like scouting it out, I guess. They don't want to like actually confront this dude mm -hmm. because he's like, he's a fucking superhero and he's got superpowers and, you know, they don't really know how to control their powers yet. Um, but uh, he ends up luring out these two, these other two, um, and you know, essentially the ensuing like conflict is like, 
I outwitted you because I'm super smart and awesome and cool. And and I have I have money to manipulate people. And you guys are stupid. Um and I'm really fast and I can do things behind your back. And you know, basically like super dumb shonen shit. Um but yeah, like the, the, it's basically it's like a pseudo battle royale, but like there's really only uh one antagonist, I guess. Cuz like I guess the the idea is that like you know the winner isn't necessarily determined by like the last person standing. It's supposed to be like whoever is the most, you know, I guess qualified to like be god. But what's the qualification? I don't I don't I don't know. They haven't they haven't really uh stated <laughs> it yet. But like So so how do you so in, in uh, how do you generally feel about the gen- the tone or the overall tone and the stuff that they're kind of juggling cuz they're kind of making this we discussed it a little bit before the podcast, right? But they're kind of juggling this battle royale thing which has the whole standard like fight or flight uh what is it you know what kind of people really rise up to the top in these sorts of uh you know death yeah. game kind of stuff blah, blah blah and then it's kind of adding this like glitter this almost like pre-cure-ish this very we, we cross this like girl series almost sparkle to it at times it's not and then I don't know. Like, what what do you think about the general tone of the series? So it's really weird, um, especially considering like when you go into the series with the context of like, yeah, this is the Death Note guy, right? Mm-hmm, um, exactly. It's it's a little weird because Death Note was pretty. It was pretty serious, right? Like it took itself quite seriously. Um, and this series doesn't really do that as much. Mm. Um, it's still very melodramatic. Uh, you know, it does like there's still moments of fucking screaming and, and there's blood and you know, people are killing each other and fucking Yeah, stuff like that. But um you know, there's there's moments of levity that I feel like Death Note never really had. Uh like you said, the dude the main character, uh his angel Nase is like constantly trying to like you know, cheer him up and, you know, get him to do stuff. And, you know, uh, very early on, um, they, like, demonstrate that the angels themselves don't really have, like, any morality. Because, mm-hmm. like, the first thing that, like, his angel, like, essentially tells him uh, when he gets his powers is that, like, yeah, your your aunt and uncle who took you in after your parents died, like, they killed your parents. Like, they're the ones that killed your parents. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, now that you have these powers, like, you should kill them and take revenge and then, like, get the money that, like, they stole from your family back. And the main character is like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, why the fuck would I do that? Um, uh, but like he does, he he does end up like the first episode. I think I forget if this is the first episode. I'm pretty sure it's the first episode. But he sh- he ends up shooting uh, the aunt with the red arrow just to be yes. like just to get the truth. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and um, then they like end up killing each other. And like that, yeah. and yeah, like uh, the aunt like freaks out and spills the beans. And then uh, you know the main character has this super melodramatic moment where he's like, "I wish you guys died instead," right? And because the aunt was under the influence of the red arrow, yeah. she ends up killing herself, right? Like yeah. as penance. Um, and of course, there's this super melodramatic moment where he starts crying and screaming, and he's like, "Yeah, actually, actually, maybe I shouldn't have maybe killed myself. Maybe killing people isn't a good thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe killing is not good. Maybe suicide <laughs> is also bad." Question mark. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like you know, there's a lot of stuff there where it's very fucking on the nose, and it's like, okay, like yeah, this is the Death Note writer. Um, but then there's but, stuff yeah. where it's like, but, but it's if like he's such an angel. Why can't he heal people? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Kind of stupid but, when you think about it. 
<laughs> but yeah, the thing is, again, the tone is a little bit, I want to say, I don't know if it's lighter necessarily, but it's definitely much more, it knows that it's, it's a little less, bit more cheesy. It's Yeah, it's less edgy. Gritty. I it's less gritty. It's, yeah. yeah, it's the main thing. Because obviously, with a series like Death Note, um, it's going to be about death, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. People are going to die. You're, no. you're going to see people die. Right. People are going to get killed. Um, and the fact that it's the main character doing it means that the main character has to be a fucking psychopath and mm. he's a bad guy. So, and, sorry, at the, at the beginning of uh, when you was describing Death Note, he sounded like the guy who hadn't read the book but it was doing the report in front of the class. It's like, <laughs> yeah. This Death Note yeah, is about so, death, right? So, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, I, I may, maybe I read Death Note and I'm pretty sure it's, <laughs> it's about not. people dying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people die in the show. It has like a notebook, I think. <laughs> yeah, there's there's probably a book in it, and I think people die. Um, but yeah, like you know, you know, it's 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 different because uh, obviously the main character of this show, Planet Man, is not a fucking psychopath. Um, you know, he actually has morals. Uh, like. The very beginning of the series, the angel pushes him to fucking kill his aunt and uncle, uh, which he doesn't want to do. Uh, the angel pushes him to fucking steal from like banks and shit, which he's like, I, I mean, they're not, evil, so gonna, why not? I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, well, he's stupid, so yeah. I don't like this guy already. <laughs> yeah, this guy's morals. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, like, you know, the main character is not fucking insane. Uh, so, like, the tone is already different from there. Um, but then you have, like, uh, you know, the the angel being more comedic relief. Um, you got these this dude running around fucking LARPing as, like, a common rider. Um, like, he literally LARPs as, like, a superhero from a show that, like, exists in this series world. Like, he's not, like, an, he's not, like, he didn't make his own costume or anything. Um, he's literally just like, yeah, I'm gonna be this guy from that show that I like. Um, which <laughs> yeah, is, just know, like how I'm going to be my favorite character from Platinum End. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, this series is a bit more uh corny. It's a bit more like uh a little bit more self aware. Um, obviously it's still very serious. Um, you know, there's a lot of fucking like. Yeah, I'm I'm evil, and I'm gonna kill all the other people, and I'm gonna become God, um, mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, but you know, there's 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 some sillier stuff going on, like how like one of the candidates, uh, is like, I guess he's some like fucking no name comedian or some shit, um, and he gets like, I guess he gets like a second rate angel, and he only has the the red arrow. And the only thing he uses it for is to get like idols to fall in love with him, so he can have his own harem. Um, yeah, and he, and he gets killed off pretty quick. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, let me guess, he's like the first to die. Yeah, he, yeah he's the first. He's the first one to die. It's um, like it's like that woman in the the boar woman in the to Jesus. No, why did I say Jesus? Uh, <laughs> Juni Tyson. Juni Tyson. Juni Tyson. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Fucking um, blanked out. But yeah. Uh. I don't know. It's not. I I went into the show expecting it to be like really fucking edgy and stupid, and you know, because like when we saw it in the previews, there was like you know, there's the dude in the fucking common rider outfit, and it's talking about like angels and God and stuff like that. And I was like, this is gonna be so fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is pretty goofy, um, but it's mellow. It's mellow. Yeah, it doesn't take itself super seriously, um, which is good and. So you know, it's like it's enjoyable, right? Um I think I think it's also one of the more important things that you pointed out is oftentimes in these more sort of edgy showing like, oh, we gotta do things to save the world and talk with the angles and the devils and whatever it is, right? A lot of these series, the main character gets railroaded by the plot. And what I mean by that is they kind of just go along. And it's like it just happens, and yeah. you just upset, and then things happen. But one of the, again, more the more important things that you mentioned about the main character 
not necessarily accepting a lot of the stuff on face yeah, and he, not going he, along he with it. He basically just much. goes like, yeah. no. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm no. not going to do that. Like, go fuck, fuck that shit. Up. Yeah, exactly. Like, so I think yeah. that's really important because especially, you know, mentioning something like Guilty Crown again, right? One of the main things that happened was, right, he, the main character got fucked over by the leader of the terrorist organization or whatever. And then the terrorist organization guy was like, all right, but come with me. And the main character was like, okay, I guess. Like, it was like, yeah, what? Like, what? No? I don't, I, don't have, I don't really have any reason to, but okay. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's really important. Even though, even if like at the end of the day, the author says, okay, this plot needs to go on. So the MC is going to end up kind of going along with it anyways. At least having that initial resistance and not doing it, I think is very important. Just because yeah. it is that... It I mean, gives it a little bit more humanity. Or so far, so far, I mean, I'll, the main character has essentially done things of his own volition, too, mm -hmm. right? It's not like I think at the end of episode four is like the first time that the MC is like, I have to, like, I have to do this, like, I have to, like, yeah, exactly. this is something that I have to do, right? Because pretty much through all of episode one through three, um. Obviously, you know, he was put into, you know, uh, situations that he didn't necessarily mean to create, like making his fucking aunt kill herself in front of him uh, with a fucking knife. But, uh, you know, for the most of it, like, he, he gets saved by the angel, and he's like, I'd really, you rather didn't do that. <laughs> like, I kind of just, I kind of just want to die, actually. Um and she's like, no, 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 no. You got to take these these wings and this these arrows. And he's like, uh, okay, I guess. Um, and then afterwards, the angel's like, yeah, you could like steal stuff, dude. You could like steal stuff and like kill people. And the main character's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I kind of just want to live my life. Actually, I've like <laughs> found I found a reason to live, and I think I kind of just want to live my life. Yeah, and exactly. The angel's like, oh, uh okay i guess sure <laughs> and then you know uh with the recent thing with like the baseball stadium where like everyone's like yeah this is a trap like both of the angels are like uh they're, like he's teamed up with they're like you 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 should not go to this like there is no reason for you to go to this you should not do that and he's like mm -hmm. yeah but i want to go <laughs> like i i want to see what's going on i going to see like you know if an opportunity presents itself. And so he goes. Um, so pretty much everything uh, that the MC has done has been of his own volition, which is nice. Um, right. uh, but yeah, I think the, the end of episode four is like the first time where it's like uh, he's present, he's like essentially put between a rock and a hard place and he's like, I have to like act. Um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good it's pretty good. It's very goofy. Um, like it's it's quite silly. You kind of essentially have to go along with the ride because you know, it like in that baseball stadium scene, like the two the two people that show up to like fight the bad guy, like this mm -hmm. guy that's killing the other people, they're also dressed as fucking Power Ranger Kamen Rider people. God damn it! And <laughs> and they're like they're otaku, right? So. <clears throat> Like it gives them, it gives their backstory too, where like they were, uh, they're like college students, and the one dude has failed, uh, I guess like to graduate like fucking three times or some shit, um, and then the other dude like failed to graduate, uh, the one time, and the guy, they're but they were both like, I kind of want to die, <laughs> and uh, the one dude's like. I've got these pills we can take, bro. Um, and then, like, I guess they take the pills, and they essentially just get really sick. Uh, and so, <laughs> um, but then, like, you know, these two angels show up, and like, they're like, "Oh, damn, we got like cool powers and stuff. Awesome!" And right. I guess when they they see like, you know, the the invitation to the baseball stadium thing, they like get costumes or whatever, and dress up as fucking Power Rangers. You know, it, it's goofy, but it's fun. And, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a bad show. It's definitely not as bad as I thought it was going to be because I thought this was going to be fucking 
not good. Um, I almost thought this was going to be like some uh, what was that? What was that series from the the games creator Inuyashiki, the old dude? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Where it's just like fucking really dumb, and it was like not like like it was goofy, but it was like taking itself seriously at the same time. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be kind of like that, but it's not. It's it's pretty chill. Okay, um, has the scene where he flies through the air crying happened yet? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's like the first uh first time he flies, I think, and then he sees the sun, and he's like, "Wow, the world is actually beautiful." <laughs> we <laughs> all that rocks. That's why he's crying. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. That's great. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's I quite every shit, time, right? But it's like. Again, yeah, it's, yeah but like, yeah, that, that, that doesn't mean it's bad. Like, if it knows, yeah, it's I mean, being it's basically like, fuck, like, I mean, they literally do like the <laughs> fucking like. You remember the original like Superman movies where fucking Superman takes uh Lois Lane like into the sky and they like fly together. They yeah. literally do that with the the childhood uh crush girl because she doesn't have wings. Right. Oh, so people with second rate angels don't get wings either. Yeah, they get one or, or even the other. or they even get, like they get even five. even like Superman in general, can we right? Fly like man, can man manipulate like, people. Like yeah, like they, man, they either you only get the red arrow get or they get the wings. Yeah, you, you <laughs> Why would you to ever fly? choose to fly? Like that's such a bad trade off. Because sometimes you want to because, fly, bro. So the way <laughs> so the way they set it up is so the you only control like thirteen people. The wings. Um, fly faster than an arrow can catch you. So, if you were to like essentially come into conflict with right. another god candidate, and they tried to shoot you with an arrow, you could fly away faster than they could shoot you. Um, so that's essentially the setup. Yeah. Uh, so it's like essentially the way they set it up is so that way um, people can't like the fucking uh, evil dude can't just literally fly past somebody at the fucking speed of light while also shooting an arrow and kill them like before they could even blink. Well, technically um, he could if they only chose the red arrow. Well, he, he could. Yeah, I think you can't shoot an arrow while flying like super fast. Okay. You can only you can only fly like so fast while you have an arrow ready. Yeah, so they patched something. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you can't you can't like you can't glitch through time and fucking <laughs> kill everybody. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they've they've essentially like set it up so like arrow uh like they wings, mostly made rock, like, paper, scissors. Yeah, like wings wings beat arrow kind of thing. Um mm -hmm. an arrow beats uh person. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Um okay. So you know, there's a, there is a reason to pick wings over the arrow, I guess. But uh, the arrow seems more useful. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they they basically do like the fucking Superman scene, um, where like he has to carry her through the sky, because like, because the reason that she uh, shoots the main character with the red arrow is to like try to manipulate him into being her protector, right? Because uh, he has wings she doesn't mm -hmm. um but then he like later on he he essentially agrees to work with her regardless of the arrow because he has feelings for her anyway so you know but yeah okay all right well again i guess uh if that's it right we'll um, have anything else not really i mean audio visuals they're okay um the the Who, dude who's doing it who's uh who's, it's signal uh, md oh signal md okay so yeah. they have a decent amount of money okay. um the dude in the fucking con rider suit is pretty much always cg which is kind of unfortunate um but you know uh, i guess they didn't want to hand animate the fucking super detailed suit um yeah but you know uh and that it's yeah i mean the audio visuals serviceable the op is kind of boring the ed is kind of boring um but yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty good. It's a pretty good show, yeah. I think. All right. Well, good stuff. Again, this is Platinum Man, done by the same author as the person who made Death Note. So yeah. if you like that sort of tone, 
I guess, check it out or those sorts of themes to check it out. And with that, I guess I am going next. I am doing Osama ranking or the ranking of kings. So this is a this is a series or manga original series. It's been going on for a long time and it's actually one of the most more popular series in Japan right now. Uh quite quite popular. And it's not just a kid series, it's actually a more this is this has more complex themes and like is is for grown up viewing and stuff like that. Although it does look like a very standard, you know what I mean, like eighties, nineties manga series at its heart, right? Yeah. But it is again very uh it does have more complex themes. It is actually done by Wit Studio, Wit Studio most famously known for obviously Attack on Titan, um, as never well as no, <laughs> yeah, never heard of as well as a bunch of other stuff. So this is obviously a little bit um ho- hopefully it'll get going because this is a pretty popular series. But we'll see. So the basic premise of this is that you have the main character, Bochi, who is a prince, the firstborn son of the king, but he is both deaf and mute, and he is assumed to be very, very weak. He's he's like very power he's he see most people view him as an idiot, you know. He seems very weak, he kind of trips over himself, gets lost, stuff like that all the time. And everybody teases him behind his back. So you can literally just hear every pretty much like couple of minutes or so in the series, there are you, there'll just be cut ins of like people teasing him or talking behind his back or stuff like that. So that's like part of the story. Yeah, but he can't hear it, so jokes on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the he meets up with this sort of blob character called Kage, literally Shadow, right? Um, oh. Who is from a the Shadow Clan, a bunch of blobs who are also sort of like master assassins or something like that. He is the last survivor of this clan, and he ends up becoming Pochi's companion. Damn, just like Sasuke. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Butchi and Kage start, you know, traveling around or doing stuff uh, inside the kingdom. That while meeting a bunch of people who obviously interact with him, and on his sort of, you know, as he sort of grows and journeys to become the king of the land, and so he most of this is just him kind of interacting with a bunch of people. As well as you know, Kage and kind of the story is about the an almost outside perspective of how Bochi is just the guy kind of traveling through. He is deaf, he's mute, but he's you know a very nice. He's a he's a very good kid at heart, and he's very you know nice hearted, and he's very earnest about what he's doing. He's not stupid. He's just got these defects, right? He's deaf and mute, but he he's not like retarded by any means. So. It's a lot of him kind of going through his paces and everybody else around him kind of reacting and regaining, I guess, in a sense, some of their humanity. So it's a very, it looks innocent on the outside. And then they have, at the beginning, there's a lot of these sorts of, you know, wicked stepmother like characters, people that are like, oh, that guy's stupid, or, you know, I'm going to be the king instead of him, or, you know, get away from me, you know, you're ugly, or whatever it is, or you're deaf and mute and you're an idiot, blah, blah. So there are a lot of these characters. And then what happens is throughout the episodes, the author actually goes through a lot of these characters and kind of almost, I want to say, breathes, breathes life into them after creating them to be setting them up to be all these sorts of enemies which is kind of interesting because you initially think of the characters as the way you design the characters is to kind of make them human from the beginning right um but i guess it's like a very like piecemeal setup that this author does where for instance like the mother the stepmother of the character is kind of initially depicted as this sort of mean person who kind of 
wants to push the character, the prince aside and just have somebody else be the king and so on. Almost just like despises Butti, the, the main character. But then later on in the episode, it kind of turns out that she does have she's she's at core she is still the kind and warm and sort of loving mother she has the motherly instinct and she did love you know she she acted very kindly to Butchi before but a bunch of sort of events that came together her having uh, a baby on her own and kind of being distracted from you know taking care of Butchi all the time and then that turning into sort of more wanton cruelty that sort of you know distracted her from her more maternal instincts towards the main character and so these sorts of more complex interactions are built throughout the story um and i'm guessing that again this is sort of sort of going to be the general theme as you, you, he goes through this journey and meets with other people and so on and i think a lot of this is both building up the human side of like the people who see Bochi and interact with him but it's also the the two other themes that might be going on, at least as, as I see it, is one, this idea of how wanton, how serious casual cruelty can be, right? Because, you know, as, as everybody knows, and there's like a billion stories about this, both in fiction and in real life. Sometimes the most harsh cruelty, like the, the harshest ways to be cruel to somebody, is kind of just throw out like casual cruel comments, right? Like if there are times where obviously people are like in like intentionally trying to be mean, but there are times where people are just kind of like throwing like that guy's just stupid because that guy's just doing this because of this, or that guy's X Y Z, you know, this race, this gender, this age, this whatever, like it's just them, so. That guy is bound to be an idiot or whatever. And that sort of outside looking casual cruelty can be just as damaging, if not more, than somebody just intentionally going out to bully people, right? So that may that sort of is one sort of idea that sticks out to me. And the second one is obviously sort of the titular thing and w- what Butchi is going out for, which is what is what does it mean for somebody to become the king, right? What is it? It doesn't mean that they're really good and charismatic. It doesn't mean that they're good at swordsmanship and, you know, feats of arms or uh, they have the mind, a mind for the economy or whatever it is. Or does it mean something else? Is it like a more intrinsic character kind of thing going on? And obviously they're sort of building up Pochi to be this person who is super kind and super willing to do things for others and that makes him sort of the leader right a leader a good leader in a sense so they're probably building up or he the author is probably building up to have supposed to be like that but these i think themes are obviously not super kids show right this is a very a little bit more mature stuff going on but i do think it's very interesting that all of this kind of coming together, right, in this format and this very like cute package that looks like a kid's show, that looks like a very 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s sort of cartoon or manga. But it's still kind of going through this journey and is kind of exploring all these themes. But it's not doing it in a super like sappy or dramatic way. It's doing it in a way that it seems charming, but it's still going, actually going through the paces and developing each of the characters and so on so i do appreciate it a lot the audiovisuals obviously i don't need to talk too much about it it's with studio they're good at doing stuff this uh art style is again very charming both the uh opening and the ending are very good like the ending you guys should check it out it's like oz by yama it's it's very popular in japan just as like with like kind of j-pop ish in general it's like a very cool uh uh it's a very like nice uh comforting ending and the opening by king new is very good as well so just check out both of it it's it's very good oh is that king king new's uh new track boy yeah uh, i think so yeah, yeah exactly yeah both of them are very good tracks so um yeah so that's that 
you know, voice acting cast, you know, pretty, pretty solid. They put a lot of money into it. It's, um, what is it? Murase Ayumu, Kajiyuki, Satorina, Eguchi Takuya, Yasumoto Hiroki, you know, Yamashi Tataiki, Miyake Kenta, uh, Sakamoto Maya, uh, Sakurai, Sakurai Takahiro, you know, just down the line, A tier people, uh, fill with them. There's really not, I mean, I don't think there's too much to point out in terms of like flaws. Maybe one thing I would be kind of afraid of is the series falling a little bit too much in line with my sort of predictions and kind of becoming too cheesy in terms of like, Butchie is going to be the king because he's the kind person. Maybe if it could be a little bit more organic than that, that would be great. But in terms of like the general like idea and the package, I don't really have too many uh, complaints about it. So, yeah. So, so Spire, in your yeah. opinion, what is the strongest king? <laughs> well, that's probably what we're going to find out in the series. Well, right? In your, oh, your, your you, you, no, in my view, it. in my view. Um, yeah. Who's your favorite monarch, bro? Yeah, who's yeah. my favorite fascist uh, emperor king, yeah. god king? Yeah. Who's, who's um, your favorite Joe Korean king? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, strong king. Obviously, it's a combination of being who is the, the strongest Pony. king in Korean history. <laughs> yeah, who's the, who is the best Korean king? Who's the best? Yeah. Um, well, there are a couple of famous Korean kings, but you know, yeah, I wouldn't say like. Just because they did X Y Z, they're necessarily super. You're stalling, like, Spire. Answer the question. <laughs> well, the two usually like the most famous ones are like uh, Sejong Deong, uh, King Sejong, who is like known for doing like education policies, a bunch of other like sort of domestic policies that are good. And then there's uh, that's not conquering the land, so it sounds kind of gay. Yeah, and then, and then the other king, uh, King Gangeto, Gangeto Deong, is the guy that essentially made korea the largest it was in its history like it, he conquered like part of china and stuff like that so like so you're china. saying he's the nobunaga of korea <laughs> the nobunaga i think many korean people will be pretty angry if you put it like yeah, that in those probably. terms i think i think so, comparing i think comparing like so he's fucking, a ripoff of nobunaga right? yeah, I think comparing like korean uh figures of like importance to <laughs> japanese figures of like, importance yeah. probably won't uh <laughs> fly won't go well. over well <laughs> for a lot of let's fire if he's so important how come i never heard of him over here in america that's true i apologize yeah. <laughs> yeah, he must uh, be a nobody actually yeah. what what cert is he is he a fate servant yet <laughs> is he a fate servant yet? <laughs> that's a Shut good up. question that's a good question Tess. i'll, I'll take a moment are there any like I don't even know if there are any like Korean fate servants, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um anyways, Korean. that's pretty much I I go Korean, Ed servant. Apparently none. I I looked it up. Damn. That's fucked up. It's because there are no famous people in Korea in yeah, Korean history ever. Yeah. Apologize. What about uh, that? Anyway. What, what about uh <laughs> What about because BTS? The... Yeah, BTS. Yeah, <laughs> Petition for BTS to be in the FGO? Is that, yeah. is that what the timeline we're in? Yeah, that's their first collab. God damn it. What about uh, Aju Nice? Hmm. What about those guys? <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, that's pretty much all I have for Osama Ranking again. Audio I wanted visuals. to ask, what is yes. like the, I guess, main conflict i guess like is it because it's he's not a rightful, conflict it's it's, it's essentially he's a the rightful heir right is there like is there people is there other people vying for yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. It's essentially the 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 quote-unquote world level world building level backdrop and although it's not really war, world building it's like the pseudo world building with the characters that i always describe yeah. that sort of backdrop is Everybody's always playing politics being like oh i'm on this side i'm i'm on your side you know prince Bochi, because you know, you seem like the kind of person that should become the king. Uh, and these other guys, this other guy, Daida, stuff like that, the, the half-brother, is a little bit too ambitious and he's kind of too conniving and he's willing to do dirty stuff, so you shouldn't do it. But then there are people who are working for Daida and stuff like that. And so uh, the background is, background conflict, in a sense, is this kind of, you know, um, uh, Daida, well, Daida actually becomes the current king, but... Uh, he 
you know, he's a little bit more conniving and he's a little bit manipulative and not sort of the opposite of Bochi in a way, personality wise. So that's part of the conflict. Um, but I would say that that conflict is obviously going to come up in terms of like advancing the plot at times. But the central sort of core backbone of the series is less that, that conflict and more Bochi kind of traveling around and doing stuff and other people kind of looking at him and in, interacting slash reacting with him. You know what I mean? So it's right. that sort of thing. It's more of a uh, Majo no Tabi Tabi kind of vibe yeah. and like travel kind of vibe and general like, oh, this is what happens kind of thing than it is anything else. So it's like Majo no Tabi Tabi, uh, I want to say Dantali no Shoka, you know, where it's like the, it's more the, the environment getting affected by the central figures and how they that changes their lives in a sense, right? Uh, this guy, this guy, forgetting the roots, of fucking <laughs> Kino Notabi. Uh, I apologize, fucking. Oh, I apologize. That's true. Oh fuck. <laughs> For first, it was me uh, shitting on Muffluff. Now it's me forgetting Kino yeah, Notabi. Yeah, today. this guy. This guy hates it's good, an <laughs> good series. <laughs> I apologize. I love I love the new Kino no Tabi. So Shut the I fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that was my review on Osama Ranking, the Ranking of Kings, done by Wit Studio, manga original. If you do like this sort of art style, and if you do want maybe a little bit more complex, uh, more more like uncommon stuff than what you might find out there uh, so far, please do check this out. And with that. We are finally on to our news. So, gonna go through it a little bit quickly. <sighs> Let's see what we have. There's not much. Again, it's been pretty quiet recently because of COVID. There's some, but there's some. Oh, yeah, there are a couple of funny pieces of news. So, here's one The National Radio and Television Administration, or or NRTA in China, instructed broadcasters and online streaming platforms to remove animation and other content for children and contain any mention of violence, blood, vulgarity, or pornography on September 24th. CNN reported, CNN, yeah, CNN reported on tw- September 28th that content streaming platforms across the country removed the Ultraman Tiga Tokutsatsu show from their catalogs following the announcement, which actually caused a public uproar with a hashtag regarding the removal removal being viewed 84 million times on Chinese social media platform Weibo. Christ. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole, like, anti-violence, anti-blood thing has been a constant theme forever. Like, for instance, in MOBAs uh, in China, if you uh, have, like, violent animations, instead of splurting blood, it splurts ink and stuff like that. There's, like, yeah. stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> was it I World mean, of Warcraft... Even- you fucking they replace like all I forget what they replace like corpses. I mean there's with there's like, yeah, there's skulls. a lot of stuff. They replace it with like show... weird shit like like bread and tombstones. Yeah, like you can't show like dead bodies and like skulls yeah. and stuff. You can't show like ghosts. Um I, I don't know. I guess it's like disrespect for dead or some shit. But like like even Japan has stuff like um you know, like anti uh, gore stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the been... main. It's the main reason that you know, famously, fucking Raiden in MGS4 had fucking cum blood, right? Like, because mm-hmm. they couldn't show him. You couldn't show him coughing out blood, um, and having his fucking arms be cut off and spewing out blood. So it, instead, they just made it white. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. But I guess. But what it's a bit about more, revenge? A bit more severe. That was yeah. also cyborg juice. Yeah, in Japan, it was just red also, cyborg. It, it had uh, in Japan it was white. Um, oh really? That's oh, why. Turn out that's why. Um, that's why the scene where Sam, like when you spoilers for Metal Gear for Revenge, <laughs> that's why the scene where you stab Sam and like he he bleeds. It was like that's why it was like a big deal because he's like one of the only characters in that game. In the Japanese version, that bleeds red. Um, oh, okay. Damn spoiler. Yeah, yeah. I Anyways. just thought Raiden could tell the difference between red cyborg juice and human no. blood. So that's why he couldn't do his cool, uh, his cool 
spine absorber on it, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, next is... Oh, this one is a pretty funny one. The official Twitter account for the anime of Kawajiri Kodama's Atasha Kawajiri Kodama da yo, or Dangerous Life Hacker... Uh, sorry. Uh, Atasha Kawajiri Kodama da yo, Dangerous Life Hacker no Tadareta... Uh, Manga announced on Friday that the anime has cast Yuki Aoi as the main character Kawajiri Kodama, as well as quote unquote almost every other role. <laughs> this is like Banania all over again, where it's like two voice actors are doing like every role. Um, so this is about the essay manga depicts the lazy, unhealthy daily life of Kawajiri, who loves alcohol and anything greasy, salty, or sweet. So um, just like, you know. Just like me, essentially. But also, uh, Yuki Aoi is voicing everything. <laughs> Next. Tokyo Metropolitan Police formally charged the 60-year-old male executive of legal affairs for the second-hand otaku retail chain Mandarake on Friday with violating the businesses affecting public morals regulation law. The charge alleges that the retail chain operated a store that displayed a large amount of adult entertainment in a prohibited area. The company admitted to the charge saying, quote unquote, it was foolish to think that we could operate a store like that even after being warned by the um, The shop in question was a quote unquote banned publication store that only recently opened at the Nakano, Bra- <laughs> Nakano Broadway complex in Tokyo on August 28th, really. Uh, the new shop was only one of many Mandarake stores in the complex, but it attracted public attention soon after its opening. Quote unquote, Spank is the fashion and clothing store catering to teenage girls, and the banned publication store opened directly across a narrow 1.95 meter a hallway from the fashion store. Fashion store <sighs> staff said that they could not reopen business due to the staff presence of the adult store. What is this? Uh, oh, is this an actual, like, full, just like, oh, okay, like, adult store. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Adult store in front of a store aimed at teenagers. So yeah. they're like, yeah, you can't do that. So, uh, it was the only adult shop, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the division ultimately cited the fact that the adult store was operating near Haas, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all this stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah, that was, I don't know. That's, I don't know about that. <laughs> At least if, well, the thing is, it's actually really funny because in, if you, if people have been to like, you know, China, Korea, Japan kind of stuff, the interesting thing is that it's not like it's, fully banned it's more just like how do i say this it's more of a regulation kind of thing where it's like or even manhattan if you guys have been to like manhattan or whatever right it's like if you walk down the block like occasionally you'll see kind of just gentlemen's clubs right <laughs> like uh, kind of along the side right it's kind of like that where it's like if you have it in a more discreet place it's okay even if it's like the same sort of like general bustling area right urban area but you can't have it out in the open. You yeah, know what I mean? Just yeah. don't, I mean, it has yeah. to be like a stark, like, white... You can't be like, like, like hey, we're a gentleman's like a club, guys. guys. Like, maybe, you can't don't, be yeah, maybe don't open a store with, like, adult uh, products right in front of a, like, teen's clothing store. Yeah, exactly. That's probably, probably it's, like, it's, like ha- yeah. it's like having, you know, like uh, a dildo store in like a mall across from the gap. Like you can't, you I can't. I mean, obviously, it. you haven't been to a fucking mall, Spire. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, I'm not classified as one. There's like you could find that at Spencer's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Which and, also yeah. could be right across from a gap. <laughs> Anyways, uh, last piece of non-person news. Uh, Mamoru Hosoda and Studio Chizu's new bell, or also known as Byuto Subakasu no Hime, literally, they all transliterated as The Dragon and the Freckled Princess anime film won the special jury press at G-Kids, Anetsi, and uh, Variety Magazine's Animation as Film Festival. I still need to watch this. This Fuck, movie man. better be fucking good, dude. Cause... God, I want to. I need to watch this, but I feel like it's not going to be like super good, but it's the animation is good. It, I mean, literally everything I've seen from it is like absolutely fucking gorgeous. Yeah, like, it is. It's been getting hyped up a lot. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, this, but yeah, this movie better be fucking good. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think it'll be as good as the um, 
what is it? It's like a, a town where you live, right? The the World War Two kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't think it's gonna be as good as that, like story wise. But God, the animation. Fuck. Anyways, uh, hopefully, you know, if you guys haven't watched it, try checking it out. Um, and one per, you know, again, I try to kind of stay away from people in news recently, but there's this one person <laughs> person news that I did want to cover. Uh. The official site for the Sound Odeon unit announced on Monday that the voice actress Narumi Runa will no longer be part of the unit, stating that her activities have quote unquote become difficult. <laughs> uh, and she has, you know, a bunch of albums that it was canceled due to various reasons, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and she, uh, taking a hiatus from entertainment activities on Friday due to her poor health. So this voice actress specifically voices a character called Mitsumina, Mitsumina Yuka in the Idol Master Shiny Colors franchise, who was recently outed for having a bunch of, what is it, like cheating scandal and being uh-huh. essentially, essentially a... Uh, essentially, she went... She broke up with a relatively sleazy ex-boyfriend who was like a business like person who ran like girls' bars or some shit like that, I forget, like hostess bars or something like that. And then she hooked up with a very famous YouTuber, a very famous Japanese, not even YouTuber, I guess Nico Nico like person and like street. Damn, PewDiePie. Streamer? Yeah, yeah, PewDiePie. Sorry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, PewDiePie. Logan Paul. He's yeah. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kima Cook. <laughs> so there is a uh, Nico Nico old, old Nico Nico streamer as well as you know again now he's on Twitch called Moko Moko Sensei who is very famous, like, he's appeared on TV and shit for being one of the, like, the OG, like, streamers and stuff. So she was going out with him, and then it was found out that she was cheating on him and was going back to his, uh, her old boyfriend and having sex on the regular because, quote-unquote, it was a very, like, hentai reason, like, hentai dojin, ero dojin kind of reason. It's like, the sex feels so good with the old guy or with the the ex boyfriend or something like that. I think that was yeah. like part of the live thing, yeah. And so she was also like insulting the current boyfriend Moko Sensei like all yeah. the time on on her like private DMs and stuff like that. And so that boom blow blew up. You know, obviously it was already bad enough because Japanese idol culture is like, oh, one of our you know idol voice actresses is having sex with somebody else just yeah, like all the time. Breathe the same air as a fucking yeah, 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 exactly. Well, which is also kind of, you know why I'm you, you know when I kind of poo poo the whole like whole life being like they're not idols because they talk about you know panties or like dirty stuff. I'm like that's not that's not how Japanese people or like any of you retards you know judge idols. The only metric by which people judge idols is by the quote unquote purity thing, where it's like. Do yeah. they have affairs with somebody? Do they have relations with somebody? Yeah, are they, they in a relationship no with somebody? Then it matters. It doesn't yeah, matter no, if they talk they about talk poop about, or panties or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whether they fucking like shit themselves on the daily. Like, yeah, exactly. If they're if they're going out with somebody, that's when it fucking matters. Yeah, exactly. She she's got to be my idol, you know, all that bullshit. Yeah. But um, not only was that obviously a big thing, but the fact that you know the bad part, which is. The actual bad part, which is she was actually cheating <laughs> on yeah. people. Like, obviously, that fucked up a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna stop sending a comment. Yes, I see. As Cecilia says in chat. Uh, but yeah, uh, just so who's no. who's your favorite? So just if Hollow Live Art and Idols inspire, then explain. No, they are. Explain. Then explain. No, they, yeah, they are. This is getting an awesome bit prepared. <laughs> if Hollow aren't idols fire, then explain shiny smiley story. <laughs> I mean, I think I think there are idols just fine. Like are, are you idol. saying that Suisse is not an idol? I think I think they're idols. No, they are right. because people yeah. again people yeah. throw a people fit. would fucking <laughs> chimp out if like they were like in a relationship. People already chimp out. With stuff like fucking, uh, like I've seen people fucking like actually upset with like uh, Noel and Flair like flirting with each other. Why? Or uh, what is it, Mori and fucking Kiara? Like people get like actually upset about that shit, and it's like, dude, 
Like, <laughs> Wait, you guys are oh, fucking she, spurts, she, yeah. Show me, show me. I want to see, see you. I mean, I don't have it on hand, but like yeah. I've, I've seen that stuff. I think I think the only uh, person that's managed to in the VTuber or like in the general like popular Japanese VTuber community that's managed to escape unscathed, despite being like I have a boyfriend or something like that, are probably is probably just um. Uh, Kanan slash Noel, right? That's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. Says who? Uh, no, no, what? No, no, you can't say yeah, that. Yeah, Toast is about to, sure, Toast is about to be like, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> who was that on skate? Yeah. We'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, anyways. So this person obviously deserves to be shit on because, not because she was in a relationship, but because she fucking cheated on somebody yeah, and shit it on. Dirtbag. Yeah, exactly. So don't. This combined with um, the recent whole um, uh, Tatsuya Suzuki and uh, Lisa thing, fucking yeah, yeah. I mean, that was even worse. I would, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I mean, that it's, was worse it's very, because it's, it's like, very hard to top. Literally, you yeah, know, cheating on one of the <laughs> most popular <laughs> people in Japan. Period. Right now, and like one of the probably one of the richer. Like probably one of the richer entertainment people in in Japan, period. Right now, yeah, I think <laughs> like, she dropped like a new album, like a new album or single popped up on my Spotify. And the moment I saw that, I was like, one of the one of the, the news recently was she broke records. Was, you dumb motherfucker! <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That guy, let me like, let me. You stupid. Like one of the like I, while I was coming through the news today, like one of the more one of the most recent pieces of news was like Lisa breaking another fucking yeah. Lisa, let me see this. Uh, yeah, Lisa is the first Japanese female solo artist to stream uh, a song over 300 million times, and this was over the uh, Homura, like the Mugen Train movie opening. Yeah, I'm like, you can't like, you guys, like, it can be. It's fine if you don't. Look, I'm just like saying, I'm available. Like, yeah, oh, it's gonna like. Saying. Yeah, it's like how big of an <laughs> yeah. ego. You need a shoulder to cry on. I'm available. <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> It's like I'm just saying, like you need to have some big fucking balls as well as one hell of an ego to be like, yeah, yeah. I'm just casually. I like I need more than a, a, a person. A fucking small ass brain. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like I know I know like I I'm you know I'm married I to the person have who is breaking like... <laughs> every record, but I could have a little bit more, right? I could have a little bit more. <laughs> but and anyways, yet, downgrade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, anyways, uh, that's pretty much all of the news for now, and we are going on to quickly the shoutouts and callouts, and this is everybody getting one shoutout and one call each. The shout out can be any one person, place, or thing, and it's just something that you want to praise. Get five out of five stars, you know, rave about. It's been the best thing of my life. Laugh, cry, lost ten pounds. And Cloud is obviously the exact opposite. Uh, something that you want to rant about. Zero out of five, stomp to the ground, rage. And again, it can be any one person, place, or thing. And we will start with Toast. Uh, my shout? Yes. Uh, let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me pull up my, my shout out list. You should shout out a list. I mean, I, I it's good that you're very like optimistic about life. I guess. <laughs> I'm going to shout out. Uh, oh, what, whatever. I'm I'm going to shout out a. Uh... Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm going to shout out Ochimono RPG Seikishi Luvilias. Yeah. Uh huh. Pretty good. Okay. Are you, are, you, are you googling it? It's fine. Good. You should. I'm not googling. I'm, 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 I'm not googling. I want to like cry. I'm like, I'm I, I heard. I heard. A, I heard a keyboard clicking. I'm not googling, googling it. it. <laughs> okay. I mean, e e either, either, either the anime or the game. They're they're both good for you. Yeah. But if you want the game, you gotta look up Ochi. No, I do not want the game, Toast. Jiri Kishi Ruvidias. You want the game? Damn it. Pretty good. All right. Yeah, it's pretty good. RPG make a game, but I got like what? 10 hours of content? 
Good, good deal. Okay. And your call out is? Let me pull out the call out list. Call out a. Yeah, okay. Let's call out Zoke, Ojo, and Ona Kishi W. Dogehin Roshutsu. Episode 1. It sucks. <laughs> okay. So, how, how, dare, how dare you? White bear, I expected a little better from you. You usually have some pretty good stuff. Just Some people like the Shinsei Futanari Idol. If that's uh, that's up your boat, then good for you. Good. Okay, so go sh- sh- sucks. Don't don't watch it. What? Yeah. That's it. All right. Near. Um. <sighs> Call it to uh, fate grand order. <laughs> <laughs> Because, um... No prizes for guessing why. I, uh, I don't know. Near who, who's, just... your, near who's your favorite fairy knight? Fairy knight? There's a bunch um, of fairy knights, right? Tristan, Isol, I don't know the names anymore. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's fairy knight Tristan, there's fairy knight Gawain. Is it Gawain? Um, I think you like Gawain. Yeah, I like Gawain. Gawain's cool. There you go. She's big. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Fake Grand Order is pushing, like, what? How old is it in Japan? Like, seven? Seven years old? Um, I think. And, like, we're still out here uh, where not only is the Lightworks, like, just not putting in a fucking pity system, um, the players are like, yeah, yeah, you know, just burning like a thousand fucking Saint Quartz and not getting a fucking five star, that's fine. Like that's totally fine. Yeah, that's that's normal. It's like, dude. Literally every other gacha game has fucking evolved, caught up, like, you know, realized that like it's fucking gross to not have pity at all. It's fucking sucks. Well, like at least sparking. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, sparking. I'm a little bit if you're on sparking, then like, um, just like you know, a rising pity system. Cause uh, I don't. Know. Sparking feels like. I think it just depends on rates and the game's like mechanics, yeah. honestly. But to me, it I depends. don't know. To me, it's I like think even, on... even a rising pity set, like any system where you know that you're gonna get it at some point as well, is just like different psychological manipulation of like, here's basically the amount of money you're now going to spend. Like <laughs> you, I mean, yeah. you are going to spend this much money, but like, um... whether it be a spark or a raising pity. So at the very oh, yeah. least, you won't run into the, a scenario where you can. Drop twenty five hundred dollars and not get the character. Not get, not get something. Yeah, it's just, it's so fucking stupid. Yeah, I, ju- I just remember that Ezra Lane also has a pity system, but only for the soup, the ultra rare ships. I mean, yeah, like pretty much every gotcha on the market is smart enough to be like, yes, eventually, uh <laughs> eventually somebody has spent enough money. Like, eventually, you know, we, we don't have to fucking torment. It. We don't have to drive people to like fucking bankruptcy and fucking suicide, you know? Maybe that's not a good idea. Um, a near space ish card. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like. The thing is, like, with FGO, I mean, this is like specific to me, I think, because obviously there's people with actual gambling addictions, and the lack of a pity doesn't mean anything to them, right? But for me, the fact that there's no pity in Fate Grand Order, um, there's no pity, there's no sparking, like there's nothing. Uh, it this is it disincentivizes me to spend money, right? Like, I'm not gonna 
really throw money in the hole for a chance at getting what I want, right? Because at the end of the day, no matter how much money you spend, there's still a 1% chance, right? Like it's the probability never really goes up. Um, so I don't know. Like to me, it's more tempting to be like, yeah, I'll drop like a hundred dollars to like, you know, finish the spark or whatever. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. or like, you know, I'm hitting pity at this point, you know, I could drop a few bucks, like keep rolling. Um, but like if has nothing, so no matter how much, how much money you spend, you can spend thousands of dollars. Like the rate never goes up. Your chances never go up. There's no guarantee. There's no safety net. Like there's nothing. So it's like, why am I going to spend money to keep rolling? When like, you know, there's, there's no, there's really no point. I, mean, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, just fuck it, Geo. Fuck it, Geo players too. Like, but ne- but near, stupid. they gave a disclaimer like ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Remember what? Remember what Archer said? That's hell you're walking into. Fucking, I don't know. It's just kind of shocking to me that like, even like you know, the fucking Japanese government or something hasn't fucking stepped in for FGO because it's like, yeah, they have the bare minimum with the Saint Graph system, but again. Like, there's no guarantee you'll even pull a five-star within a certain amount. Like, I've literally seen people spend, like, 1,200 quarts, which is a lot of fucking rolls, like, an absurd amount of rolls. Like, that's hundreds and hundreds of rolls. I, I think the issue is um, it's, like, if they if they start cracking down on, what is it, um, gotcha stuff, right? They need to start, they'll need to start cracking down on, essentially, like, pachi sauce stuff, kind of stuff as well, right? And I that's guess. obviously, you know, they're never going to do that ever. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, it's just like FGO is so big. Like it's, it's hey man, so they don't have huge. to. The West could. <laughs> I mean, they. I, the West I, well, the West is the West like, is kind hey, of trying what? here and there, but it's not you succeeding really, very well. Yeah, and the problem, I mean, the problem is too, is that once you start getting into government shit, they're gonna go, they're gonna overstep like ten million times over. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But I don't know. It's just like absurd to me that Faker and has been going for so long, and the players are like, you know, like, like a Delight Works employee has not been murdered. Like that's shocking to me, basically. Um, but you know, yeah, shit sucks. I hate my fucking luck. Although you know, <laughs> I've had, I've had it pretty good in FGO for a while. So I sometimes guess these things up. happen, my friend. It just caught up to me. But um. As for shout outs, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> What's your Nothing is good. Here? Everything I, sucks. I've, I've kind of been just getting shit on like, all week. So. Yeah, what's your favorite food? Uh, I don't know. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? You can shout out that. Um, hey, we got some good, good dubs in Apex, you know? Yeah. Yeah, shout outs to the rare occasion. That me and Dark don't get an absolutely fucking brain dead uh, third party member in Apex Legends, and we actually like do well. <laughs> shout outs to those few and far between moments where yeah, shout outs to where the you octane get, like, player doesn't, a wraith doesn't and not run an head octane. first into six enemy teams. See, I goes, don't know if that's happened to us. Why didn't with you an back to yet? <laughs> I don't I'm know sure if that's. It has. Oh, I just sure, remember sure winning like with like fucking. Oh, no, no, yeah, we did win with an Octane. We did, we did. Yeah. I think we've gotten, like, I think we've gotten one good Octane in the entire lifetime of us playing Apex Legends. Have you you got any VTubers to play with you yet? No. Why not? Because pretty much... You'd also be on a different server. Yeah, they play on the Japanese server. Um, What about Niji San, J-E-N? They don't exist. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, hey, listen, Pamu Rainpuff, you sound like uh, Soda Poppins text-to-speech, and I'm always down yeah. to play Apex. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Thank you very much, Nier. Dark. Uh, uh, 
I was gonna shout out shout out Grand Blue. Um but instead I'll I'll go even further and I'll uh shout out uh Rumi Okubo. Instead. Okay. Because that is the voice of Lunalu. Well, actually, oh, I mean, okay. yeah, I guess I should shout out just Grand Blue because I'd also like to shout out, um, what's her name? Uh, see what her Shira cards. Uh, oh, yeah. How, how could I fucking uh, Kato Emery? And, oh, yeah, Kato Emery, so, yes. Yeah, so shout outs to them and just Grand Blue because the most recent event was uh, really good and had had uh, what do you want to call it? Um, since it was all the all like the Harvin fucking Kotatsu squad reading like a I don't even really know what to call it because it was it wasn't like a BL novel it was like almost like that but not really BL. It was like a fucking... supposed to be like a fantasy period piece novel of like two brothers that are... Um, what do you call it? Like successors to the throne of the Empire. Shit like that. And it's just this big event of them reading through it. Uh, and it's got a lot of fun stuff with them voicing the characters for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Um... And there, there's a lot of really cool stuff there. And so, like, this is an all-male cast. You have all of these female voice actors bouncing between their characters in Grand Blue and then, like, these male characters in this novel. Uh, and Kato Emery does an insane job uh, bouncing from uh, Shiro right to that. And that was really good. And also, you know, just uh, Rumi Okubo fucking like having like fujo meltdowns uh was pretty fun <laughs> so it was a uh it was a real fun event and they did a real good job okay uh, i may have sparked for a character i didn't realize wasn't limited uh so <laughs> there's that uh for I, I, I uh i sparked for light loon a little um, my call out is gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out fucking Navi Gavi for the, for their fucking NFT tirade on Twitter. <sighs> being like, being like, why, why, why does there, why doesn't anyone like NFTs? It's legal. I'm being told why people don't like NFTs to their face and going like yeah but it's illegal so I don't see what's wrong with it <laughs> it's like okay but here's why here's what's wrong with it like you know they were told I mean and also the fact that they were told like yeah it's horrible for the environment like the process of this and the explosion of NFTs like has been terrible um, mm -hmm. but more so than that it's a fucking scam because like that's what art collection is. Like it is a fucking scam. I mean, that's what collection is nowadays to begin with. Like it's not like art collection at the top is literally rich people like ripping off mm -hmm. other rich people. Yeah. <laughs> like pretty much. like trying to pass fakes, trying to fucking like like inflate the price of things by like buying and selling between themselves and artificially inflating it. Um, so there's that, like there's that aspect as well. And they were just kind of like, yeah, but it's illegal though. And it's like, okay, so then fucking try and sell NFTs and have your art fucking stolen because that's what's going to happen. Like you're going to sell, you're going to sell a couple NFTs then people are just going to start stealing your art and making NFTs of it and selling it at a fucking higher price. And then you're not going to be able to sell it. So there's that. And then fucking like 
I don't even know. Like, I don't even know what else to say. It's just like, it's just such a stupid fucking idea. Oh, yeah. Also, they don't even have, they don't have a fucking Patreon. Yeah, that was the kicker or to me. Or a fan box. Like, they, they open the, they open the question because, like, they're, like, they essentially open it as, like, I'm seeing other artists making money off of NFTs. But then I'm also seeing, like, backlash against NFTs. So, like, what's going on, right? And my issue that I, like, I came in, I guess, to the topic late. But, like, the thing I picked up on was, like, they're asking about NFTs because they want to make money, obviously, right? Like, they're, they're, they're literally asking about a stable form of income. And I'm looking at this person's Twitter. And they don't have a link to a Patreon, a Fanbox, uh, a Fantia, like anything, right? They have nothing. They have nothing for, like, the absolute standard for artists to get stable monthly income, right? And so, in my head, I'm like, why the fuck is this person asking about NFTs when they don't even have a Patreon or Fanbox? Like, what is this thought process? It's, it's like absurd. And in my opinion, they're literally just like looking to get rich quick. Like they're literally seeing the price point on some of these NFTs. And they're like, yeah, I'll get that. Without realizing that a lot of the absurd price points on these NFTs that are like fucking ugly as shit to begin with um, is like, after the initial sale it's resales like um it's people like reselling which the original artist doesn't see a fucking dime of, right um yeah and so, also again could literally and, just be reselling majority of to it themselves is, yeah majority of it is money laundering so the, the thing is the, the thing is what i'm saying is like in terms of like like nfts in isolation right like the the idea of nfts and like you know, a lot of, I mean, the like, basic kind of... idea of an NFT could be okay, but the execution of them is fucking horrendous and meaningless. Yeah, I know. Like eighty percent of the time, like it's either money laundering or, like, at best case, it's kind of just like trying to buy into a scam, right? It's, I mean, just like... I, I just think even even at its baseline, like the way an NFT functions, just like like it doesn't work. <laughs> like it is a it is a bit of like tech that could work in a like naively optimistic environment. Yeah, well, I mean, what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to say is that how do I explain this? Um, I don't know. Are you are you basically trying to say like it, it would be nice if like. No, 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 you know, no. There I'm could saying... be true like ownership of these. No, no, like, no, no, they no, could no, sell no. Their art Honestly, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that this sort of like hustle is inevitable, right? So it's like on face, I'm like, I'm not okay with it, but I'm just like, I accept the fact that it exists, right? Like it, it's like a thing. But what? kind of upsets me is when people start trying to justify it a lot of times with weird shit like oh this is for the health of the artist is to make the the artist environment you know like the 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 money like flow a little bit better blah blah this you know this is really cool this is actually awesome stuff it's unique it's your stuff man this is actual value like don't like look if you guys want to do the hustle do the hustle but don't like walk up and tell me that this like fake alligator leather purse is like actually good like you know what i mean like yeah, like man. at the point to me to me it's literally like like this is the latest stage of capitalism like you could get You're literally <laughs> assigning yeah. fucking arbitrary value to yeah, yeah, yeah. jpegs like well, again what I, I mean i mean that's that's not even i mean not the gotch, even. Gotchas are like, even the same thing right like, yeah games, but it's or... like it, it's not even like you own the image you own like yeah yeah you yeah. own one a, step above that you own yeah. a link that is tied to, to like the blockchain that yeah. links to the image and it's like yeah. you were literally owning nothing like you, you were assigning value to tangibly 
nothing. Right. Yeah. What Which I'm saying is, is I'm, I'm okay with people living like that. Like, I'm if somebody else wants to be like, hey, I want to own a million dollar hyperlink, right? Be my guest. But what I don't like mainly is the dealer of that million dollar hyperlink, but turning around to me and saying, no, no, this is a good thing. You know what I mean? That's that's I mean, it's the not thing even that gets it's me. not even so like it's not even so much as like, this is a good thing. It's people being like, This is the future. Like yeah, this exactly. is how no, things no, no, are exactly. going to be yeah. Yeah, yeah. from now on. It's like, yeah. it's like no you are insane. You are fucking <laughs> like you are in a different reality. I mean, it'd like, be like <laughs> it would be like trying to say like, I mean, because it's even more obscure than that. But it'd be like some fucking wealthy art trader being like, "Yes, this is the next big thing." Like, mm-hmm. no, <laughs> no, it's not. There's gonna be know. some. There's gonna be some dumbass like, which is what's happening with NFTs, where it's like. I mean, that's the one of the bigger problems I always have with it, and like the push of it is that. And and with like collectors sort of um, as well, where you have people who have no business trying to get into this, trying to get into it and fucking destroying themselves for no fucking reason because they didn't think for two seconds and say, oh, wait a minute, this is a fucking scam. Wait, <laughs> wait, these are actually people just trading things between themselves. Oh, okay. It's like, yeah, imagine yeah. if, um, imagine that's why, if when that's why that copy that sealed, community. yeah, like imagine if, imagine if that sealed copy of like Super Mario, Super Mario Brothers, like sealed copy or whatever. Imagine if somehow mm-hmm. that got into the hands of like some regular games collector bought at the time it was actually worth $30,000. Right. It's like no, it's not. It was never. It was never even worth that. Let alone the one point whatever million it got pumped up to by the same three people who have always owned that game, which is like when you think about it for more than thirty seconds, you say to yourself, "Oh, over like fifty million copies were sold through for this game, and there were like fucking seventy million printed or whatever," and yeah. it's like. A sealed copy of that game is not uncommon. Like that's not a rarity. There's probably right. a shitload of them. Um, but like, so I feel bad about the idea that there are people who are getting wrapped up into this, thinking that it that it even amounts to like getting lucky on trading crypto. It's like it's it's even further gone than that. It's like yeah, yeah. it's it's very out there. Yeah, and so. Like my my biggest issue too with his with their response was like, yeah, dude, if you want to like say you're gonna try this to make a quick buck, like fuck off, whatever. I just won't follow you at this point. Like, I'll just stop following you. But like, don't sit there and be like, oh, well, it's illegal, and uh, you know, like oh, I'm gonna make some money off of this. And it's like, cause you're not. Like, you're ignoring all of the risks that everyone just presented to you. Of, like, you're just going to have all of your art stolen from you. Like, you're going to sell it for a fucking low price. It's going to get resold for a massive price. And then, again, there's nothing to say. Like, it's going to be a pain in the ass for people to, for you to dissuade people from just, like, literally taking your art and turning it into an NFT now because there's demand for it and then yeah. selling it themselves. Right. Like you're going to have to go through this whole fucking process through like language barriers probably to try to resolve that. And also the legal defense doesn't even work because it's like okay, so now you started selling NFTs across the fucking globe. What happens when, like, you sold NFTs to someone in Germany and now fucking German law dictates that anyone who buys an NFT literally owns the intellectual property within that NFT? What do you do then? Like, what happens when, like, this is someone who has an ongoing, like, set of characters that they draw? 
What happens when you've now sold an NFT fucking three years ago to someone in a country where now technically they can sue you on like for fucking making art of these characters now or selling right. another NFT with them in it? Like now you're fucked. <laughs> like now you have to deal with that. Or now you have to pack up shop and hope to God that you can escape with the money. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it's such a fucking like messy situation to like try to get yourself into for actually putting an effort to. Yeah. Like, I saw that thing, like, near linked me that thing of someone buying like a fucking NI, no, no, AI generated. Uh, I mean, image. Majority of majority of NFTs are AI generated. Yeah, it's like <laughs> AI generated. You literally images. just make you make a bunch of assets, and then you just have some fucking algorithm randomly like paste those assets onto some sort of pixel thing or an alien or uh, the one that I linked to Dark was literally fucking rainbow squiggles. Like it was literally just MS Paint, like. Bro, scribbling. it's just like Nijave's like, stuff covers stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it's literally just like not even like it literally just a diagonal, like jagged. Fucking no, I was saying that's what people thing. will say. <laughs> yeah, but like, like if you saw this thing, Spire, like you would. It's literally like two seconds in MSP. Yeah, like, it's something. It's something that you would have made in like a learning how to like use a computer class in elementary school where you yeah. are having fun. <laughs> like you give a you if you give like a three year old MS paint and you let him draw one line and you say, Okay, you're done now. Like that's what <laughs> that's what this this NFT was. And it sold for like millions of dollars. Yeah. It's like and it's like like this is just money launder. Yeah, and like <laughs> that yeah, and so like if that somehow legitimately went through, like some idiot was rich enough and dumb enough to buy that off of someone, sure. But like when you start getting like your own real art into it, it's like you are fucking playing with fire, like Yeah. For playing a dangerous you, and very dumb game. You're you're basically now playing with fire in persistence like until you stop doing anything with nfts like yeah. the moment you keep doing this like you're fucking consistently playing with fire now anyways yeah it's it's a little bit unfortunate but you know this is this is this sort of thing has been it's been a thing since the rise of civilizations or since the dawn of civilization so unfortunate that it's happening in this way now but you know uh, thank you, Dark. And I guess I'm last, right? As for my shout out and call out, my call out is to the YouTube algorithm because it keeps recommending me stuff that I thought I'd blocked, which is fucking retarded. And my shout out. What was my shout out? I should probably just shout out Amakano one more time, but actually, my shout out is to. Uh, this heater in my room for actually keeping me warm because I've been a little bit cold because I've been having to walk outside a lot more recently in the rains. And uh, coming back home to an actually heated room is pretty nice. So shout out to that. But yeah, this is pretty much all we have for today. Again, thank you to everybody for sticking around to listen. and. For everybody here, uh, again, we are going to be doing three more episodes of this, of the fall 2021 reviews. Before we go on to the previous shows, if you guys want us to hit us, hit up on us to hit up on any specific series, then just, again, contact us on social media or whatever. And if you do like what we do, we stream our podcast recording live every other Saturday over uh, during... <laughs> Every other Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at twitch.tv slash for anime cast where we stream our live recording of the podcast, talk about the latest and greatest in Japanese anime related media, anime, manga, light novels, web novels, visual novels, and so much more. So uh, check us out here. We also record our uh, 
podcast and highlight it here so you can check it on Twitch as well as on YouTube. So whichever format you desire, uh, check us out on our social media for Player Anime Cast on Facebook as well as Twitter at 4 PB Anime Cast for more information and updates. And until next time.